Hello again? <laughs> Darn it, I forgot how I used to say that. Jack, let's rehearse the commercial once more. We'll be on the air in just a few minutes. Uh, later, Don. Jello again? Jello again? <laughs> Jello again? Mary. <laughs> Mary, I'm nervous enough without you throwing me off. We'll be on the air in a few minutes. Why don't you study the script? Some script. I went through it five times and I can't find a single joke. Well, hold it up to the light. There must be some there. <laughs> Gosh, I, I don't ever remember being this nervous on an opening broadcast. I guess I'll be all right as soon as I get my first laugh. That may take us clear into April. <laughs> Can you stop being so pessimistic? You got plenty of funny stuff for tonight. Yes, Jack, I wouldn't worry about the script if I were you. By the way, have you got the same writers you had last season? You mean Scum and Abner? <laughs> yes, they're still with me. Incidentally, I wish they'd get here. The last routine needs fixing up. Where are they? Oh, they're across the street at Roseland dancing with each other. <laughs> the ball-headed one thinks he's Yolanda. <laughs> oh, well. Hello. Hello again. Three minutes to go, Mr. Benny. Holy smoke. Gosh, I don't know why I'm so jittery. An old trooper like me. Why should I be nervous just because we're broadcasting from New York? Well, maybe it's because you can remember when the Indians were here. <laughs> oh, quiet. I tell you one thing, Mary. Nervousness is a sign of temperament, and it proves that I'm a great artist. Hey, Don? Yes, Jack, you certainly are. Yep. What that fat guy won't say for money. <laughs> You you keep that up, Miss Livingston. Oh, and when you get your first paycheck... Oh, Dennis, Dennis, if you want to practice, go out in the hall. I'm all on edge the way it is. What's the matter, Mr. Benny? Well, we've been off the air since last May. We'll be broadcasting in a few minutes. Aren't you nervous? No, I'm happy. It'll be fun to start eating again. <laughs> what? Why, why, Dennis, you poor kid. If you needed money for food this summer, why why didn't you come to Uncle Jack? Uncle Jack's rates are too high. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When Kenny Baker needs money, Mr. Allen doesn't charge him any interest. He's very liberal. Listen, liberal? Listen, kid, Fred Allen wouldn't give his grandmother a new tip for her crutch if he owned a rubber plantation. <laughs> Talk about saving money. He tried to get a transfusion from a Chinaman so he could live on rice. <laughs> Imagine. I'd keep quiet if I were you. You took me to the store club the other night, and when the check came, you pulled a knife on the waiter. Well, where do they get that stuff? A dollar and a half for a steak sandwich. Who wouldn't complain? Who wouldn't squawk? Well, I'm getting tired of being thrown out of every place we go. <laughs> Nobody was thrown out. Now, listen, Mary. Two minutes to go, Mr. Benny. Yike. Hey, I wonder... I wonder if the music is all set. Where's... Where's Phil Harris? There he is, looking out the window. Oh, yes. Gee, has that guy changed? Gosh, he's so in love since he married Alice. Yeah. Oh, Phil. Phil. Have you noticed, fellows, the leaves are turning brown? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Phil, snap out of it. Now, now, remember not to play your opening band number too loud, Phil, because Don has to do his commercial over it, so, so keep it down. I'll be very happy to. Thanks. Hmm. See, while he's in such a soft mood, I ought to slug him. I may never get another chance like this. Huh? Now, Phil, come to, will you? Say, Jack, what? I'm not going to do this joke here. It's too corny. Where? This one here. Mary, that's a topical gag. We have to do them. Topical or no topical, I'm not going to say that you go out with a girl in Brooklyn because you can't dodge her. <laughs> Dodger, don't you get it? Mary, the Brooklyn Dodgers. That's a baseball joke. If I had a bat, I'd hit you right over the head with it. <laughs> a fine attitude. Now, look, I'm the boss here, and if you don't... Jack, take... Jack, here comes our sponsor. Whoop, the sponsor. Oh, Oh, hello, uh, hello, Mr. Mortimer. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary and everybody. Oh, hello, hello, Mr. Mortimer. Hello, Bill. Hello, John. <laughs> well, Mr. Mortimer, we're just about set for our first broadcast. Are you going to listen to the show this year? I mean, this evening? Hmm? Yes, Jack. And I hope it'll be funny. 
We don't want to get off on the wrong foot, you know. No, no, we don't. No, indeed. <laughs> no, 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 sir. No. You know the public. They can tune you out just as fast as they can tune you in. Oh, faster, faster. I mean, yes, sir. It's up to them, all right. It's... One minute to go, Mr. Benny. Okay, okay. Get ready, fellas. Now, Mr. Mortimer, you've looked over the script and everything is fine, I hope. Yes, Jack. Uh, there's only one thing I don't like. Why don't oh, you... Oh, yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Wait till he tells you. Oh, 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 yes. Now, what was that suggestion, Morse Mortimer? Mr. Mortimer? Uh, uh, what's wrong? Now, if there's anything you don't... Hey, Jack, here are your writers. My writers? Oh, back from Roseland, eh? Listen, you guys, where's our last routine? Look, we won a cup. <laughs> All right, you won a cup, you're wonderful dancers. Now, go in the other room and fix up our last spot. On what? On what? Where's your typewriter? We bet it on Lou Nova. Oh, my goodness. Well, use a pencil, anything. Get it done. Okay. Come on, you land up. Coming. Bill! Bill, cut it out! Now, cut it out. Don't encourage him. Isn't that awful? You'll have to excuse him, Mr. Mortimer. Now, what was that gag you didn't like? The one Miss Livingston tells about your girl in Brooklyn that drives a Dodge. Oh, no, no, Mr. Mortimer... You've got that wrong. She drives a Dodger. I mean, I go. I go with a girl in Brooklyn because I can't dodge her. It's very funny. Don't you get it? Now, just what is there between you and this woman? Nothing. Nothing, Mr. Mortimer. I don't even know her. It's only a joke. You Ten know. seconds. Stand by, everybody. Okay, come on, fellas. Let's give him a good show. On your toes. Well, what about that joke? All right, Mr. Mortimer. You're the boss. Take it out, Mary. Take it out. Take it out. I thought you were the boss. Not when he's here. Take it out. Take it out. Jack, Jack, quiet. We're on the air. Take it. Oh, oh. Jello again. Uh, pardon me. That's too soon. Shh. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. We're on. Jello program coming to you from New York City, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our master of ceremonies, a man who has missed you as much as you have missed him, or have you, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, isn't it wonderful to be opening our season here in New York for a change? There's so much going on, so much excitement and everything. Yes, Jack, I've never seen the old town so crowded. Well, why not? All the new shows opening, the Lewis Nova fight, the World Series. Have you seen any of the games, Don? No, I haven't, Jack. I knew it would be terribly crowded, and I didn't want to get pushed around. Hmm. <laughs> Look who's worried about being pushed around there. Now, wait a minute, Jack. That fat stuff isn't going to be believable this year. I was on a diet all summer, and I lost eight pounds. Eight pounds, huh? Don, taking eight pounds off of you is like losing a homing pigeon. Look in your backyard, and there it is. <laughs> but speaking, speaking of crowds, Don, I went to Ebbett Field yesterday, and boy, those Brooklyn fans go absolutely crazy. Really, you never saw anything like it. Yes, I read where a lot of people even had their clothes ripped off. You said it. Don, I can understand what happened to my hat, my tie, and my shirt. But how I lost my art supporters, I'll never know. <laughs> my shoes were still on. <laughs> that must have been quite an experience. Oh, I wouldn't want to go through that again for... Oh, well. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you? Well... Well, Mary, here we are in New York again, and believe me, we couldn't have picked a better time. Huh? Yeah, things are sure popping. Yes, sir. Jack and I were just talking about all the people that came here for the fight in the World Series. Yep. The hotels are so crowded, it's hard to get the accommodations you're accustomed to. Oh, it's murder. Huh? I'll say. Jack had to take a room with a bath. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, sister. I always get a room with a bath. None of that walking down the hall for me. No. <laughs> Oh, no? No. Then why do you always buy hiking shoes with your pajamas? Mary, you keep that up and I won't take you to any more shows. You're not the only girl I know around here. That's right. You know, Don, Jack goes with a girl in Brooklyn because he can't... Whoop, 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 whoop. Hold it, hold it. Take it out. Take it out. What's the matter with you? Mary, we can't do that gag. The sponsor's sitting in the front row. That's all right. He's asleep. <laughs> 
Well, a big laugh will wake him up. Huh? Just remember, Mary, we're not doing any corny gags on this program. Correction, look who's coming. Hiya, folks, here's your little ray of California sunshine. Make me happy. <laughs> That's, uh, that's plenty, folks. I'm the star here. Well, um, Phil, Phil, I haven't seen you since last June. Neither have I, Phil. Gee, you look great. Why not? I'm in love. I feel like a million bucks. Well, Mary sure agrees with him. Hey, Phil, did you bring Alice with you? Did I bring Alice with me? My baby's always with me. Listen to him. Did you fly or take the train? Who knows, Jackson? Who knows? <laughs> I'll be darned. Ah, oh, folks, ain't love grand. What hotel are you stopping at, Phil? Well, you know them two big towers on the Waldorf Astoria? Yeah. We're living on a cloud right above them. <laughs> on a cloud? Hey, Jack, maybe you can get one without a bath. Mary. Well, Phil, you sure got it bad. You know, I haven't been in... Oh, oh hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, folks, here's your little squirt of California orange juice. Applaud on me. <laughs> well, Billy, but how are you, boys? Ah, well, here we are, the Jell-O gang all together again. Well, have you been enjoying yourself, Dennis? Yeah, I've been listening to the World Series games on the radio. Those Dodgers are a cinch to win. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you're a... So you're a Brooklyn fan, eh? They are moitering. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about that, Dennis. Those Yankees are pretty powerful. Well, Loney, they're scared of Brooklyn. Scared? Sure, they were supposed to play at Ebbets Field Friday, and they didn't even show up. <laughs> well, well, naturally, it rained Friday. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dennis, they don't play baseball when it rains. Now, look, Dennis, if you're so sure of the Dodgers, and they certainly had a tough break today, I'm sorry, Leo, but uh, how would you, Dennis, if you're so sure of them, how would you uh, like to make a little bet? I haven't eaten since May, and he wants to bet. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot about that. I'll tell you what, Dennis. Right after the broadcast, meet me over at the Stork Club, and I'll buy you a nice steak dinner. The Stork Club? Why, Jack, I thought you just... Never got... mind, Don. Never mind. It's, um, it's a date, Dennis. Uh, meet me there. But it's always so crowded, Mr. Benny. How'll I find you? If you come at the right time, they'll throw them right in your face. <laughs> Mary, one more crack out of you, and you'll be holding that cake of ice in the new Olsen and Johnson show. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for talent. Uh, now, Dennis. Yes, please? Hmm. Uh, time is fleeting, so how about entertaining us with a number? Are you in good shape for a song? It rained, he says. It did. <laughs> now, sing. Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bennett. It's Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, where are you? I'm up here at the Lennox Avenue. If at first you don't succeed, roll them again, Cruz. <laughs> oh, shooting dice, eh? How much are you ahead? Ahead? Boss, if I was winning, this phone call would be purely social. Oh, oh, so that's it. Well, Rochester, don't expect to borrow any more money from me. But, boss! Now, look, boss. I'll get it, gentlemen. Stand back. <laughs> Ro Rochester, who are you talking to? Some fraternity brothers who ain't too fatty. <laughs> Well, I'm very sorry, Rochester, but I can't advance you any more money. Look, boss, how about sending over that $50 I won from you on the Lewis Nova fight? The Lewis Nova fight? I told you before, I do not owe you that money. But, boss, I'll get a gentleman fold that thing. <laughs> Rochester, our bet was that Nova would be knocked out. Knocked out? Yes. Now, you see, Lewis couldn't have knocked out Nova because Nova had what you call a yogi cosmic punch. Uh -huh. He's been perfecting it for months. Uh -huh. That cosmic punch is something brand new. It's never been used before. Impractical, ain't it? <laughs> you don't understand, Rochester. I'm not going to explain it to you, so goodbye. But, but wait a minute, boss. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Rochester. Rochester, I'm going to hang up now. I'll discuss this with you tomorrow. You have to discuss it with my yogi because I'm going to be a spirit. <laughs> oh, don't be such a coward. Goodbye. I'd like to come to New York just once without Rochester getting into trouble. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> That, uh, that was You and I, sung by Dennis Day, and very, very good. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Mr. Benny. What is it, kid? You know where I can get a ticket for the game tomorrow? I'd sure like to see the Dodgers play. Well, I've only got a pair of them, Dennis, for Mary and myself. Do you want to go tomorrow, Mary? Sure I do. I paid for my ticket, and I'm going. <laughs> oh. You speculator. You paid just what I paid. I'm sorry, Dennis. Why don't you give him your ticket? You've been out to every game and haven't seen one of them. All right, so I left my glasses in California. Anyway, I told you I don't need glasses. Go on, you can't even read the news flashes on the Times building without them. Well, those letters move. <laughs> That's why. You should have seen him last night running round and round the building trying to get the headlines. Oh, quiet. And now, ladies and gentlemen... But, Jack, what about those glasses you're wearing right now? Don, they came this morning airmail special, so I'm wearing them. Big thing over nothing. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... You don't need your glasses, eh? <laughs> tell them what happened in Ebbets Field yesterday. Nothing happened. You know, when you try to catch... Mary! Up... What was it, Mary? Tell us about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Jack and I went over to Brooklyn. And when we got to Ebbets Field, boy, was it crowded. I told him about the crowd. <laughs> Well, anyway. Well, anyway, as Jack told you, he's left his glasses in Hollywood. So as we walked through the gate, he kept saying to me, Are you sure this is the place, Mary? Are you sure? Are you sure? Uh, are you sure this is the place, Mary? Are you sure? Mary. Mary, where are you? Don't get panicky. I'm right here in front of you. Oh. Well, take hold of my hand. You promised to lead me. <laughs> Now, sit close. The idea of coming to the ball game without your glasses. You know you can't see a darn thing. Don't worry, I can see all right. As a matter of fact, whoop! Oh, oh, pardon me, madam. That's all right, bud. <laughs> hmm, I mean, sir. So crowded here, I can't tell a man from a woman. Where are seats? Uh, right over here, follow me. Hot dogs, get your hot dogs, get your red hats here. Hot dog, old timer? Yeah. Where are you? Where is he? Where are you? Where... Just follow the garlic. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, give me two hot dogs, buddy. You want the regular or the king size? <laughs> the regular will be all right. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. This hot dog sure smells good. You said it. Oh, uh, pardon me, mister, but you're putting the mustard on my thumb. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. It just so happens that... What? What? What's that? What happened, Mary? Where? Who? What? 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 What happened? Hurry up, Jack. The game started. See, I hope we haven't missed much. Where are our seats? Uh, right down here by the first baseline. Oh, nice and close, eh? Hello, Mary. Hiya, Jackson. What's cooking? Who's that, Mary? Jeepers, he's deaf, too. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. What a game. What a game. Yes, sir. Who are you betting on, Phil? Cincinnati, Jackson. I'm in love. <laughs> And he's going to be a father. <laughs> what a guy. See you after the game, Phil. Here we are. Uh-oh. Hey, Jack, look at that. Where? Who? What? What? Look at what? Where? <laughs> Say something. Where? There's a great big guy sitting in our seat. Oh, there is, eh? Well, I'll straighten him out. I'm sorry, mister, but you're sitting in my seat. So what? <laughs> Here's what. Look, bud, you, you'll just have to get out of my seat or I'll throw you out. Oh, you will, huh? Well, let's see you do it. Now, listen, pal, I don't care if you are a sailor. Get out of my seat. <laughs> That's a policeman. Oh. Well, blue is blue till my glasses get here. Move over a little, Mary. I'll sit on half of your seat. Okay. What's that? What, what, what happened, Mary? What? Boo, boo, boo. What? What happened? What's going on? What? They called a third strike on Camille, and the Yankees are coming up to bat. Oh. Where do you get that stuff, you mad? Kill the Empire! Kill the Empire! Boy, she's tough, isn't Kill it? the Empire! Madam, why do you want to kill the Empire? We was once engaged. <laughs> oh, oh, 
it's personal. I mean, it's personal. <laughs> oh, boy, what a game. Huh? <laughs> Who, what, what? What are they cheering? What's going on, Mary? What? The Maggio is coming up to bat. Oh, boy, now there's a guy that can really hit. Hooray for DiMaggio! Ow! <laughs> Madam, watch that right. That's me left. Put me right on a kill you. <laughs> oh. Gee, there's a fan for you, huh? Yeah, the Dodgers sure are popular. You said it. Say, that gives me an idea, Mary. I just thought of a terrific gag for our program next Sunday. What is it? Well, you say to Don Wilson, Jack goes with a girl in Brooklyn because he can't dodge her. This game here? No, no, no. <laughs> Look, a dodger, dodger, don't you get it? It's a topical gag and the sponsor will love it. <laughs> it's terrific. I ain't laughing. When I want your opinion, officer, I'll ask for it. You see, Mary, when Don says to you... What, what? What's that? What happened, Mary? Mary, what happened? What? What? The Maggio what? hit a fly. Oh. It's a foul ball and it's coming this way. It is? Oh, yeah. Stand back, everybody. I got it. I got it. Get out of my way. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you know, lady, I got it. Look out, Jack. I got it. I got it. Ooh. <laughs> well, he got it. Throw some water on him. What? What? What happened? Who? Who? Where? Where? Where am I? What happened, Mary? Who? So you see, Don, that's exactly what happened when Jack went to the ball game yesterday without his glasses. Well, I'll bet you're glad you got him now, Jack. You'll enjoy the game today. Oh, for heaven's sake. Are you going to believe Mary? Look, Don, here's what really happened. When Medwick hit that foul ball... That was DiMaggio. All right, DiMaggio. When DiMaggio hit that foul ball, I saw it coming my way. I stood up and caught it with one hand. You know, Don, when I was a kid, I used to play shortstop with the Waukegan Wildcats. Why, we used to beat the best teams in the league. Kenosha, Racine, Zion City, Highland Park. Why, there was nothing to it. Then we will be with you again next Sunday night, again broadcasting from New York City. Oh, Mr. Mortimer, did you like the program? Mr. Mortimer... Mr. Mortimer. Oh, don't wake him up, Jack. Oh, that's right. Good night, Joni. Good night, folks. Sleep tight, Mr. Mortimer. The Jell-O program, coming to you from New York City, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, exactly 449 years ago today, Christopher Columbus first set foot in the New World after a perilous ocean voyage of 40 days and 40 nights. Boy, what a trip. I wish I'd have been there. For weeks and weeks, Columbus and his band of intrepid adventurers were tossed around in the storm-turned Atlantic, little knowing that they'd come through alive. Reef that mainsail. We'll make it, fellas. So now we bring you a man who gets seasick when the crackers bob about in his oyster stew, Jack Benny. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don... That was a very funny introduction you thought of. You sure love to kid your old boss, don't you? Yes, I do, Jack. And you're my idea of a real sport. Well. I make those cracks about you because you're so big, you're broad-minded. You're the kind of a guy that can take it. <laughs> a good old Donzie. By the way, I believe you were born in Denver, Colorado, weren't you, Don? Why, yes, Jack. In fact, I spent my summers there. Your summers, eh? Uh-huh. Well, unless you keep a civil tongue in your big, fat head, <laughs> snow will be hitting you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard any, um... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How are you? Fine, thanks. Now, are you kidding? <laughs> Don, have you um, have you ha- heard any reports on our opening program last Sunday? You know, comments, reactions, and so forth. Why, yes, Jack. Some people seem to like it very, very much. Uh huh. Some people thought it was fairly good. Uh huh. And some people. Well, yes, sir. <laughs> Well, Don, I thought the press was exceptionally nice this year. For instance, uh, PM gave us a lovely notice. In fact, you could almost call it a risk. Yep, PM said our opening program was really a humdinger. Very nice, don't you think? Oh, wonderful. And Radio Guide liked it, and Billboard, the theatrical paper, seemed to think we had a hilarious show. Tell them about the Daily News. Mary, it just so happens that Ben Gross, radio editor of the news, didn't like the program, and he's entitled to his opinion. I have no hard feelings toward Ben. You haven't, eh? No. Then why did you try to get Errol Flynn to beat him up? (laughs) I didn't even know Flynn was in town. 
Anyway, most of the notices were very favorable. Uh, did you read the one you got in the Daily Worker? Yes, I I read the Daily Worker. What did it say, Mary? Same thing every year. Down with Benny. <laughs> Yeah, but you talk about right Get a load of this raid in the Waukegan News Sun. Benny wows him again. Here, Mary, read it yourself. Okay. Well, naturally, Jack, your hometown paper will be 100% in your favor. I don't know about that. They're pretty critical, you know. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? Look at this news item on the other side of your write up. Where? I didn't see it. It says, uh, Boo Boo Benny, cousin of Waukegan's own Jack Benny, was picked up again last night for tossing his body too far away from the curb. <laughs> What? Uh, when interviewed, Boo Boo said, I don't want to set the world on fire, I just want a bromo. <laughs> Give me that clipping. Uh, Boo Boo is always getting into those publicity stunts. Anyway, Don, the uh, consensus seems to be... Hiya, Jackson. Like the wash woman says, what are you here from the mop? What? M-O-P. I got the gag. You don't have to spell it. I got it. Say, Phil, uh, we were talking about the first program last week. Did you see any reviews on it? Yeah, there was a swell write up in the Orchestra World. Oh, the musician's paper, eh? What did it say? It said, uh, due to the length of the dialogue on Benny's first program, Phil Harris had to cut out his usual band number. Oh, they missed it, eh? No, they liked the idea. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, don't feel bad about it, Phil. It's only one opinion. You and know. that reminds me, Jackson. I hate to bring it up, but Alice thinks that this program is a little too corny for a guy like me. <laughs> what? He feels that I ought to be on a high class or show. <laughs> uh, high classer? Yeah. Alice says I ought to be on information, please. <laughs> oh, she does. Well, Phil, Alice is a dear, sweet girl, and I respect her opinion. But if you were ever on information, please, and you were asked who was the first president of the United States, and you said George Washington, Cliffs and Fadiman would drop dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I might also add that at present, Mr. Fadiman is in perfect health. Look who wants to be on information, please. Why, well, Phil, even Jack would be afraid to go on that program. Absolutely. And he has a remarkable memory. Certainly. I read something, I never forget it. Especially that write-up in the Daily News. <laughs> Quiet, will you? You're going to keep talking about... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. How are you? Fine, fine, thanks. Say, Mr. Benny, did you see the write-up your opening program got in the Brooklyn Eagle? The Brooklyn Eagle? No, what did it say? It said what happened to you and the Dodgers shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> I guess there's still a little blue over the series, you know. You're... Anyway, Dennis, I heard a lot of nice things about your song last week, so now that you're here, let's have another one. Okay. I'm going to sing a very popular number called Time Was. Good, good. And this being Columbus Day, I dedicate it to my new girl I met last night. I picked her up at Columbus Circle. <laughs> oh, how are things around there? I must saunter by. Um, go ahead and sing, Dennis. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? May I congratulate you on this, the, your opening broadcast of the new season? Opening broadcast? Look, Bob, we had a show last Sunday. Good heavens, are you going to count that one? <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> what a guy, his head looks like the ball Mickey Owen dropped. <laughs> Go ahead, then. That uh, was Time Was, sung by Dennis Day, my favorite tenor. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Mr. Benny... What is it, Dennis? You know, I saw Charlie's aunt this summer, and somebody just told me that pretty lady in it was you. <laughs> oh, well, it, it was me. It was me. It was my character in the picture. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Holy smoke! You know, I thought it was a real girl. <laughs> no, 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 Dennis. It was me. And, um... <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... I sent you a love letter. Forget about it. <laughs> Well, now, wait a minute, jerk. Dennis. Look. Dennis, the fact... Look, the fact that I was wearing a dress shouldn't have fooled you that much. After all, a woman doesn't walk like me. 
Very few men walk like that. <laughs> That so? Speaking of the way you walk, Jackson, have you seen them penguins over in Radio City? <laughs> yes, I've seen them penguins. And he wants to be on information, please. All right, then. Jefferson was the first president. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, Phil, Washington was the first president. I merely said if you knew that, Fadiman couldn't stand the shock. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Mr. Benny, in that fan letter I sent you, I enclosed 25 cents for a photo. Uh, later, kid. Not now. Well, gee whiz. I haven't got one in a bathing suit. Now leave me alone. <laughs> How he can do any good at Columbus Circle, I don't know. <laughs> really, I don't. <laughs> and, now, <laughs> and now, folks, I, um... Uh, we're having fun tonight, huh? Now, folks, I, uh... <laughs> I'd like to announce that beginning next Sunday, October 19th, our broadcast will come to you from Hollywood, California, as we're returning home. Well, we sure had fun in New York, didn't we, fellas? Huh? Yes, it's been grand, Jack. The little woman and I saw nearly every show in town. I saw three swell ones. Panama Hattie and Claudia and the Wookiee. Wait a minute. What about the one I took you to? Oh, yes. Arsenic took me to see Old Way. <laughs> Look, Mary, you don't have to be so bitter. Those were the best seats I could get. Oh, stop, will you? I'm not kidding. I got them from the producers of the show, Lindsay and Krause. They had dinner at my house one night. Well, they're even with you now. <laughs> oh, for heaven, don't be silly. <laughs> what if we... What, what if we were sitting up high? Who could see you? You were wearing a veil. Veil, nothing. I got caught, I got caught in some cobwebs. <laughs> you got caught in that gag, too, right in the middle You know, if you read that gag right, it's a good laugh, really, it is. Huh? What? <laughs> it's only our second show, you know. And, uh, well, anyway, Mary, next time... Look, next time, you can go alone. Say, hey, Jackson. What? Alice and I saw Lady in the Dark the other night, and we thought it was great. Oh, did you like it? Yeah, she explained the whole plot to me. <laughs> well, get this situation, huh? Now, Gertrude Lawrence plays the part of a dame who's all mixed up about everything, and she don't know what's the matter with her. Uh-huh. So she goes to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> psychiatrist? That's a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist is a Japanese dish. That's sukiyaki. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I was right about Washington. <laughs> that I know. Anyway... She finally gets the right guy. They fall in love. The curtain goes down. Alice put on her shoes and we went home. <laughs> well, that's a vivid description. You know, Phil, the next time you go to a show... Pardon me. Uh, come in. Yes? Uh, excuse me, sir, Mr. Benny, but I got a note for you. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I'm busy right now. Come back later. Well, I would advise you to take a quick gam that discommunicate. <laughs> All right, what's the note? What does it say? Now, I'm only a carrier pigeon. We ain't much on reading. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's have it. Uh, who's it from, Jack? Who do you think it's from? Rochester. Listen to this. Dear boy. Please give bearer, Mr. Columbus Smith. Columbus? Yes, that's me. <laughs> oh. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Mary. Let me read this note from Rochester. Please give bearer $50, which you owe me, as I owe it to a group of gentlemen who ain't. <laughs> And I'm being sorely pressed for payment. Well, of all the nerve. I don't care if he is pressed. Mr. Bennett, if you don't come through, that bar is going to be cleaned and pressed. <laughs> oh, oh, well, look, Columbus, you tell Rochester I'll call him when I get home tonight. Uh, what's his number? Monument to 1700. <laughs> uh, monument, eh? Yeah, and do call, lest one be erected to his memory. <laughs> Okay, I'll call him. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Ben. Goodbye. Imagine Rochester sending for $50. Play something, Phil. He got into this jam. Let him get out of it. I don't want to 
to set the world on fire, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, who haven't even got a match. <laughs> All right, I didn't like that gag either. I told you further. <laughs> Say, Phil, I notice you're using a lot of New York musicians while we're in town. Uh, where'd you get them? I walked out of Lindy's with a sturgeon in my pocket, and they followed. <laughs> Oh, well, throw it to them. They look hungry. <laughs> now, fellas, as I told you before, we're leaving for California tomorrow, and I may not get to see you till train time. So I might as well give you your tickets right now. Oh, Phil, here's accommodations for you and Alice. And Don, here's space for you and the little woman. Oh, thanks, Jack. Oh, goody, we get a lower going back. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Dennis, uh, Dennis, you're, uh, you're bunking with me, as usual. And, um... Gee whiz, Mr. Benny, you snore. All right, I snore. It's only for three nights. You're young yet. <laughs> now, Mary... If I'm going to stay up all night, I might as well be a playboy. All right, be a playboy. Let's drop it. Now, Mary... I know. I'm going to sleep with Miss Whipple. That's right. Miss Whipple? Who's she? Jack put an ad in the paper for someone to share my birth. <laughs> Never mind. I meet more darn people that way. <laughs> Mary, let me run things, will you? You know, planning a trip like this is no sin. I'll bet she's big and fat. She's very slim. I asked for a picture. <laughs> now, fellas, remember, we meet at the station a half hour before the train leaves, and I want you all to be there on time and no more complaints. Hey, Jackson, what's the idea of putting Alice and me in an upper berth? She's a big movie star. Phil, I'm in charge here, and you'll take what you get. Mr. Zanuck won't like it. Not Mr. Zanuck. <laughs> now, fellas, not Mr. Zanuck? What did I say? I've got to make pictures of <laughs> I've got three more pictures to make there. What am I doing? Oh, well. Now, remember, fellas... Everybody be at the station a half hour before the train leaves. I'm giving a cocktail party for Miss Whipple. <laughs> Might as well all get acquainted. Hmm? So try to make the... Come in. Oh, it's you again. Uh, Mr. Danny, I just spoke to Rochester on the phone. He said it's imperative I bring him the $50. Now, wait a minute. Did you tell Rochester I'd call him later tonight? Yes, sir. And he said if you don't call him now... Later tonight, you'll have to communicate with him by Ouija boat. <laughs> oh, he's making a mountain out of nothing. Rochester must think money grows on bushes. Well, you owe it to him, don't you? Mary, if you're referring to that bet I made on the Lewis-Nova fight, I have never conceded that Nova was knocked out. Well, Jack, Rochester would never have sent the note unless it was important. Now, I think you ought to call him. Oh, all right. Mary, get me his hotel, will you? Monument 21700. Okay. Well, you've certainly gone to a lot of trouble here, Columbus. Are you a good friend of Rochester's? No, sir. I'm just a member of the syndicate which threw that fatal seven. <laughs> oh, I, I see. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Senator. Goodbye. You said I left Rochester home where he belonged. Here's your number, Jack. Thanks. Hello? Good evening, Teresa Hotel. I'd like to talk to Rochester Van Jones. This is Mr. Benny calling. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Are you going to pay him that 50? What? <laughs> what business is it of yours? We're stepping out tonight, and I had hoped for a bottle and a bird. <laughs> I can't help that. Now, operator, will you please ring Rochester's room? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, has Rochester oh. got a girlfriend in California? Oh, for heaven. Yes, yeah, he's got four or five girls there. Is it four or five? <laughs> What's the difference? I'm going to carve him up and pass him around. <laughs> Operator, will you please get Rochester? I want to talk to him. Uh, yes, sir. I'll ring his suite. Imagine living in a suite yet. Call from Mr. Van Jones. Yeah, I am, sweet potato. Don't sweet potato me, short, dark, and going to be shorter. <laughs> Operator, operator, get off the line. Oh, oh, hello, boss. Did Columbus get there? Yes, he landed twice today. <laughs> I got your note, Rochester, and I'm not sending you any 50. But, boss, I ordered some gentlemen, one of whom is mechanized. <laughs> I don't care what he is. And another thing, Rochester, why is it you have a great big suite here in New York while I live in one room? 
Well, I'm in so much trouble, I gotta face up and down. Oh, you do? Yeah. You better get a race track, son, because I'm going to run you. Operator, will you please stop cutting in? Now, Rochester, you promised me you wouldn't shoot dice while we were here in New York. And yet you lost $50. Explain that. Well, boss, it just happened that I was down on one knee tying my shoe. Uh-huh. And several of my lodge members got down on their knees to see what I was doing. Uh-huh. And while we were all in that position, I re- reared his ugly head. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for you, Rochester, but you'll have to take care of your own obligations. But, boss, all I want is the money you owe me on the Lewis Nova fight. I told you before that, in my opinion, Lewis did not knock out Nova. Oh, reconsider. <laughs> Operator, please. Now, Rochester, I don't want to discuss this any further. The fight is over, so forget it. Wait a minute, boss. There's a gentleman here that's very much interested in me collecting that 50. Would you mind talking to him? Oh, all right. Put him on. Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Metropolitan M. Spears talking. <laughs> yes? Rochester tells me you question the outcome of the recent Lewis Nova fight. I certainly do. The bet was that Lewis would win by a knockout. When the fight was over, Nova was on his feet. Yeah, but he wasn't going no place. <laughs> Look, all I'm trying to say is Nova was not unconscious when the fight ended. Uh, Mr. Lewis thought he was. That's what he thinks, but I'd like to get Mr. Nova's opinion. Well, uh, when he comes to, let's check with him. <laughs> now listen, Metropolitan. You say Rochester owes you $50. That's right. And it was my understanding. Come back here, boy. I ain't got my hat on. <laughs> well, look, Metro, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send you a check for Rochester's debt as soon as I am definitely convinced as to the result of the fight. Uh, thank you very much. That's okay. I'd like awfully well to get it before inflation steps in. <laughs> You'll get it. Now, put Rochester on the phone. Yes, sir. Oh, Rochester... Mr. Benny's going to take care of that 50. You want to make it 100 or nothing? Rochester! <laughs> now listen, Rochester, we're leaving for California tomorrow, and you haven't even started to pack my trunk yet. So you better meet me bright and early. Well, what time does the train leave, boss? You ain't going to be on. Operator! Now, Rochester, I want you to stop at the tailor's and pick up my shirt. You said you wanted to marry me, and you got five gals in California. They're just bridesmaids, honey. <laughs> Rochester, pay attention. Now stop at the tailor and tell him that all my cleaning must be ready by noon. And see that you don't miss the train. And here's another thing. The next time you're in New York and you bend over to tie your shoe, you better have something to back it up with. Because I'm getting sick and tired. We're a little late, folks. Good night, Johnny. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this evening we would like to reenact for you the events which occurred on our recent trip from New York to Hollywood. As you all know, we did our last show from New York City, and the following day the whole Jell-O gang left for the coast. Jack had to check out of his hotel, the Swank Hampshire House on Central Park South, so he said he might be just a little late getting to the station. This way, Rochester. I gotta stop at the desk for my bill. I'm moving as fast as I can, boss. This stuff's heavy. What do you mean, heavy? Those two suitcases are half empty. Yeah, but this trunk on my back is loaded. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. That trunk isn't so heavy. I wasn't bow legged when I picked it up. <laughs> All right, set it down while I see what I owe here. Okay. Easy now. Let's see, I've been at this hotel three weeks. Gee, it's such a rippy place, I'll bet my bill is terrific. Well, might as well ask for it. Just rip the teeth, boss. <laughs> I can take it. <clears throat> oh, yes, Mr. Benny. I'm checking out of 22D, and I'd like to have my statement, please. Oh, yes. Why, Mr. Benny, you didn't shave this morning. I didn't have to shave. I don't live here anymore. <laughs> now, please give me my bill. In just a moment, please. I'll get it from the cashier. Thanks. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. I thought you were going to meet me out in front. I'm waiting to pay my bill. Oh, I better get you a slug of brandy. <laughs> Come back here. I don't need any brandy. Good morning, Miss Livingston. Morning, Rochester. Gee whiz, Jack, if you still got that old trunk, why don't you buy a new one? Mary, I keep that trunk for sentimental reasons. 
My father gave it to me on my 16th birthday. Well, at that, it held together better than you did. <laughs> no, I don't know about that, sister. Well, what do you say, clerk? Is my bill ready? Here it is, Mr. Benny. And please don't cause a scene. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just going to go over it. Now, let's see. Room, twelve fifty a day for 21 days. That's, um... Rochester, where's my adding machine? Where is it? I couldn't find it, boss. You must have left it at the store close. <laughs> oh, yes. Say, Jack. What? You can't always trust those adding machines. Why don't you take Einstein around with you? I don't even know Einstein. Say, clerk, uh, my room, um, my room is uh, twelve fifty a day, eh? Yes, and stop dusting off my lapel. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Well, uh, what I'm getting at is, uh, don't you give professional rates here? After all, I'm an actor, you know, like Ronald Coleman or Spencer Tracy or Harry Lauder. Now, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but twelve fifty is minimum on that room. All right, all right. Let's see. Restaurant thirty four fifty. Laundry twenty eight cents. <laughs> the uh, newsstand. Hey, wait a minute. What's this item here? Newsstand fifteen dollars. That was the day you got that good write up in PM. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Now, let's see. Oh, uh, look what time it is, Jack. The word is right up. It would have helped the gag a little bit. Of what? What? Is, huh? <laughs> yeah. what? Look what time it is. Say your bill. Let's get going. Now, I'm not through checking off. Hey, what's this? $68 for phone calls to Birmingham, Alabama. I never called Birmingham. They're waiting for us at the station, boss. <laughs> I don't even know anybody in Birmingham. We don't miss that Six, sixty-eight dollars. What is this? Come on, let's go, let's go. phone charge. Now, don't worry, Mr. Betty. We'll investigate them, and if we're in error, there'll be a refund. There better be. And I'll tell you something else. The prices here are something awful. Aren't they, Mary? Yeah. Are you letting get away with that 28 cents for laundry? <laughs> well, that was a dress shirt. Rochester can't do clean. <laughs> All right, clerk. Here's your money. Thank you. I got it, Mr. Hathaway. <laughs> All right, you got it, you got it. I can't figure it out. $68 for telephone calls to Birmingham, Alabama. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> yeah, we better get started. Come on, Mary, let's grab a cab. I'm not going to get in a cab with you. You always want a neck. Not in the morning. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, goodbye, clerk. Goodbye, jerk. <laughs> Fine, I've been in this hotel three weeks. You can't even pronounce my name right. <laughs> Century Limited for Chicago. Now ready on track 20. I mean track 20. Oh! My goodness, I hope Jack doesn't miss the train. He's got all the tickets. Want some of my potato chips, Mrs. Wilson? No, thanks. Well, personally, Don, I think Mr. Benny has done a very bad job of managing this trip. Now, Peggy. The idea of putting you and me in one berth, that sabotage. Want some of my potato chips, Mr. Wilson? No, thanks. Well, Dennis, are you glad to be going back to California? Yeah, but I got to sleep with Mr. Benny, and he snores like anything. Oh, it's awful. Well, why don't you put a pillow over his face? I did, and he snored a hole right through it. <laughs> Gosh, 
I was sitting feathers all night. Well, here we are. Oh, hello, Jack, Mary. Hello, everybody. Hello, Don. Well, Mrs. Wilson, are you thrilled that you're going home? I'll be thrilled if I make it. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, Mrs. Wilson, you notice I got you and Don a lower berth on the trip back. Hooray. I, um, I thought you'd be more comfortable that way. You see, a lower is wider than an upper. Well, Don is wider than a lower. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> now, Mary, as long as Don, as Don and Mrs. Wilson are happy, that's all that counts. I'm so happy I could punch her right in the nose. What? Now, Peggy, dear, Peggy, darling, control yourself. Oh, let her alone, Don. She has a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> if she ever hit me, I'd fire Wilson so fast it'd make her head swim. <laughs> well, where's the rest of the gang? Where's Phil? Phil and Alice are on the train. She was just mobbed by autograph hunters. Oh, oh, she was. Well, I can sympathize with her. I go through that all the time. <laughs> Autograph, autograph. I'm sorry I forgot today, Mr. Benny. That's all right, kid. Well, I'll be done. Here comes Jack Benny. And not now, Dennis. We've got to catch a train. But be on your toes when we get to Kansas City. Yeah. Show Miss Faye something about autograph. Last call, 20th Century Limited for Chicago. Now ready on Crack 20. <laughs> I mean, Crack 20. Oh, nuts. I'm going home. <laughs> Well, let's get on the train. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Miss Whipple? Oh, come on. Let's go without her. We can't go without her. She's sharing your birth. She's taking advantage. She's coming along. Oh, Miss Whipple! Miss Whipple! Come on, Jack. We'll be late. Yeah. Miss Whipple! Oh, you don't have to, Mr. Benny. Well. She says she's wider than Wilson. <laughs> Mary, it's only for three days. Come on. Come on, everybody. On the train. On the train. Now, Mary, don't play me for this. The picture you sent me, she looks very thick. Boy, look at that scenery. Just think, Mary. Here we are only two days out of New York, and we're in New Mexico. Want an orange, Mary? What, again? No, thanks. <laughs> Gee, look at those mountains. You know, Mary, that's where I'd like to live. Right in those mountains. Close to nature. Yeah. Away from all the hustle and bustle of the city. That's a life for me, Mary. Yeah. The simple life. <laughs> See, I'd live on beans. Beans and deer meat. Probably shoot the deer myself. And then someday, someday, Mary, I'd be hiking through those mountains and I'd discover a gold mine. I knew you weren't living on those beans for nothing. <laughs> no, there's no use talking to you. Look at the scenery, Dennis. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, it's beautiful. Dennis, will you please stop yawning? Well, the way you snore, Mr. Benny, I haven't slept for two nights. Well, Dennis, what if I do snore? Sleep isn't so important. Thomas Edison never slept more than five hours a night. Yeah, but he was inventing something. I just got to lay there and listen. <laughs> well, well, in, invent something. Who's stopping? <laughs> what a kid. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Ain't this scenery beautiful? Look at them mountains. Yeah, we were just talking about them. You know, that's where I'd like to live, Jackson. Close to nature. Why, I'd live on them beans and that deer meat and then go hiking all the time. When you get to that gold mine, you're going to have a little trouble with Jack. <laughs> Mary, we can dream, can't we? Say, Phil, where's Alice? She's in a diamond car, autographing pictures. Hmm. I tell you, Jackson, that gal is more popular than I am. Well... <laughs> That's sweet of you to admit it. Signing pictures, eh? You know, Mary, on my last trip to the coast, I handed out over 350 autographed pictures. Yeah, but you had to give away dishes with them. <laughs> All right, a little cup and saucer. What is it about? <laughs> so inexpensive. <laughs> uh, well, Phil, wake up, Dennis. Uh, well, Phil, by this time tomorrow, we'll be in sunny California, 
Are you glad? Yes, sir. I've had my vacation, and next Monday I'll be back in night school improving myself. Oh, you signed up again, eh? Yeah, I'm taking all new subjects this year, Jackson. Got geometry, and chemistry, and etiquette. Etiquette? You know, no peas on the knife. I'll always give you a seat to a broad. <laughs> Give a thousand dollars if Emily Post was here. <laughs> or were here. Which is correct, Mary. Was or were? I'll go shoot a deer. <laughs> well, Phil, etiquette is one subject you can use. Yeah, etiquette. Dennis, pull yourself together. All you do is yawn, yawn, yawn. And sit up straight. People will think you're drunk. <laughs> Say, Jack. What? Look at this picture in Radio Guide. Fred Allen in a bathing suit. Fred Allen? Let's see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, get a load of those legs. They look like shillelaghs with hair. <laughs> no. No kidding. Well, at that, Jackson, he don't look no worse than you do. What are you talking about? Look at me when I straighten up. Look, I got a very good figure. Well, you should have. You're still wearing that corset from Charlie's aunt. <laughs> Well, Zanik said I could keep it. Anyway, I don't even need it. You know, Jackson, I'm getting hungry. Me too. Dennis, peel me an orange. I can't. I'm too weak. <laughs> All right, I'll do it myself. You want a nice, sweet, juicy California orange, Mary? Don't build them up. I want meat. <laughs> okay, let's go up the diner. Say, Phil, have you seen Don? Yeah, he's up in the other car ahead with Peggy. All right, come on, Mary. See you later, fellas. You know, Mary, I could kick myself for not bringing any pictures with me. Maybe I can... Whoop! Oh. Oh, hello, little boy. Oh. Say, mister, are you Jack Benny? Yep, that's me. Gee whiz. You know, Mr. Benny, I listen to your program all the time. Well. <laughs> Isn't he a cute little rascal, Larry? Yeah. <laughs> well, Sonny, what did you think of our first two broadcasts? Don't worry. You'll get rolling. <laughs> Hmm. Come on, Mary. What's the matter? Afraid he'll pop you? <laughs> no, I'm not afraid he'll pop me. <laughs> Just believe that children should be seen and not heard, that's all. <laughs> There's Don at the end of the car. I'm hungry, darling. Uh, let's go on the diner and get something to eat. No, Don, not until tomorrow. But I'm starved. We're not eating until we get home. Our berth is crowded enough the way it is. <laughs> Bum, bum, ba, bing, ba, bum, 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 What did that kid mean? I'll get rolling. <laughs> Talking to the porter, eh? I warned Rochester about shooting dice. Let's see. Here's drawing room A. Here's B. C. I tell you, Sylvester, I had the most wonderful time in New York I ever had in my life. Is there much excitement in Harlem right now? Brother, there's been excitement in Holland ever since the Dutch moved out. <laughs> no wonder he couldn't do any work. I used to stay in those nightclubs so late I'd get sunburned going home. <laughs> Say, that must have cost you a lot of that green stuff, Rochester. Where'd you get it all? Well, I don't exactly work for nothing. You know, Mr. Benny gives me 400 a week. $400? No, oranges. I cash them in at the market. <laughs> He does all right. I grow the juiciest ones in Beverly Hills. <laughs> you know, Sylvester, there's a gal singing in a little nightclub up there. That's the most gorgeous thing you ever laid your don't deserve it eyes on. No fooling. And she kind of goes for me, too. Describe her, son. Well, uh, geez, I don't have to tell you about. Mm-hmm. But did you ever see a cup of coffee with just the right amount of cream in it? Mm-hmm. Well, hang a low cut evening down on it, and there she is. <laughs> he thinks about. <laughs> Say, Rochester, oh, what about that gal you used to go with? Uh, what's her name again? Oh, you mean Susan Brown? Yeah. Where is she now? Oh, I get in touch with her once in a while. She's living in, she's living down in Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, uh -huh! <laughs> Rochester! Oh, 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 oh! Now, Rochester, you were 
standing right there in the hotel when the clerk told me about that $68 telephone charge. Oh, but, 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 Now, you owe me that money, Rochester. It's coming out of your next month's oranges. I mean, salary. <laughs> and the next time you pull anything like that when we're on the road, you'll stay home. See you later. Of course, I should have suspected something like that. Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Boy, it's sure crowded in here tonight. Everybody uses the washroom at the same time. Tell me, pal, will you, Phil? Yeah, yeah. Where's my toothbrush? Say, hey, look at the lights outside. We must be passing through a town. Yeah, I wonder where we are. Hey, Dennis, look at that sign on the station. What town is this? Waiting room. <laughs> Oh, fine. Waiting room, New Mexico. <laughs> Where did I put my toothbrush? Hey, Jackson, you ought to get a load of yourself in that nice shirt. You look like an old-time Arab. <laughs> they wear turbans. I've got a cap on. Now, where did I... Dennis, did you see my toothbrush? No, but here's your teeth. <laughs> That's just a bridge. Hand it over. Watch out, kid. You'll get bit. <laughs> Oh, Phil, you're so clever. How do you ever think of so many brilliant remarks? You know? One side, Grandma. I'll give you a hot foot. <laughs> now, listen, Sonny, you just wait your turn. In other words, get in line, bud. Hey, it's not Halloween yet. What have you got that costume on for? I sleep in this. Now, scram. Get gone, Grandma. I gotta shave. <laughs> Say, what are you gonna shave? A coconut? <laughs> I can't top him, eh? The little brat. Boy, am I tired. Me too. Well, I guess we're all set. Get moving, Grandma. I want to get some sleep before I get to Hollywood. What are you going to Hollywood for, anyway? I'm going to be a gag man for Bob Hope. <laughs> oh, he's getting him young now, isn't he? Hand me my robe, Don. It's that green one with seven up on the back. <laughs> Good night, Don. Good night, Phil. Good night, Jackson. Oh, by the way, Sonny. Yes, sir? Uh, before you sign with Hope, I'd like to have a little talk with you. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, breakfast together. Come on, Dennis. Let's go to bed. Okay. Hey, Dennis, did you buy a Navajo blanket when we stopped in Albuquerque? I haven't slept in two nights, and he wants me to buy a blanket. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You know, Dennis, that little kid has something on the ball. That grandma gag he pulled on me was pretty good. Huh? Yeah. I hope he hasn't got an agent. <laughs> uh, they always cause trouble. <laughs> See, I think Mary and Miss Whipple are here in lower five. Good night, Mary. Good night, Jack. Good night, Miss Whipple. Good night, Mr. Benny. Sleep tight. How else can we sleep? <laughs> Don't complain, it's the last night. Well, here's our berth, Dennis. Call in. Nothing doing. I get the outside tonight. You had the outside last night. Don't you remember? You fell out four times. Now, get in there. Quiet. We're trying to sleep. Oh, pardon me. Now, get in there, kid, and stop making trouble. Okay. Gee whiz, Mr. Benny, there's no room here. Put the oranges in the hammock. <laughs> And if you eat any while I'm sleeping, watch the juice. <laughs> now get in there. Okay. Boy, I hope I can sleep tonight. Oh, you'll sleep. I know I will. I'm tired. Are you comfy, Dennis? Yeah, I'm all right. He'll be good to get home. You know, that little kid might not be a bad gag man at that. Hope he shows up for breakfast. <laughs> Boy, it feels good to stretch out here. Darn it. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. There you go, crawling over me again. Dennis, if you 
can't sleep, I'll tell you a bedtime story. Now relax, close your eyes, and listen. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a poor little girl named Cinderella, and she went to a ball and married a prince. Now go to sleep. <laughs> Exhausted. Say, what if that kid wants a lot of dough? Of course, they're crazy about oranges at that age. Uh, imagine Rochester calling up Birmingham, Alabama. You'd think that sixty-eight dollars. <laughs> Well, here we go again. <laughs> oh, boy, whistles tonight. We'll start counting sheep. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's a police dog. Four, five, six, seven. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, next Friday, October 31st, is Halloween, and will be celebrated by gay parties throughout the land. Yes, sir. We'll play games and everything. So tonight, we bring you a man who always loses his bridge bobbing for apples, Jack Benny. Thank you. Uh, Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, <laughs> that was a very funny introduction. Uh, losing my bridge, bobbing for apples. <laughs> uh, did you think of that all by yourself? Yes, I did, Jack. It was my own little brainchild. Well, it certainly is clever. I mean, the way you expose all my faults and my defects. <laughs> <laughs> People enjoy it, too. Yes, yes, they do. Hmm. You know, Don, they have a program out here where a man sits by himself in a small room and plays phonograph records all night long. Uh, he's called Hank, the night watchman. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, one more introduction like that, and you're going to be known as Don, the Decca Day Man. <laughs> In other words, I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame with your contract. <laughs> uh, by the way, Don, uh, getting back to Halloween... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How are you? Uh, getting back to Halloween... Oh, oh, fine, thanks. Uh, getting back to Halloween... You didn't have to answer me, you know. What's that for? Coming in so mad. What's the matter with you today? Well, you know that new usher they got at the reception desk, that tall, good-looking fellow? Yeah. When I came in just now, he winked at me. Oh, a fresh guy, huh? He's not going to take me out tonight. Well, I don't blame you. I asked him, but he's busy. <laughs> All right, so much for romance. Now, Don, what were we, uh... Oh, you mentioned something about Halloween. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, are you going out with us next Friday night and have some fun? You know, ring doorbells and everything? Oh, I don't know. You don't have the excitement nowadays that you used to have on Halloween. Ah, I guess you're right. Well, I remember back in Denver when I was a kid, we used to have a time of our lives. Denver? You should have seen the way we celebrated Halloween in a little country town like Waukegan. The old-fashioned pranks we used to play. But kids don't have fun like that anymore. What do you want, plumbing or fun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> guys, Don, the, the things I used to do in those days. I'll never forget one Halloween. You know, I was a little boy then, and I, I took the chop suey sign off a Chinese restaurant and nailed it over the front door of our house. <laughs> oh, boy. Huh? The chop suey sign, huh? Was your father mad when he saw it? No, he just hung a tail on his derby and went into business. <laughs> 
Uh, that's how my sister Florence came to be known as Lotus Blossom. <laughs> At some restaurant, chop liver and suey. <laughs> and then the uh, following year, <laughs> the following year, oh, oh, hello, Phil. Are you coming out with us Halloween? Yeah, Jackson, but I can't meet you until after nine o'clock. I got to go to night school. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil, we'll meet you in front of the school about 9.15. How's that? Okay, I'll bring my long pants with me and slip them on. What? <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Phil. Don't tell me you wear short pants to night school. Look, Jackson, I'm in third grade, and I'm going to dress like it. <laughs> oh, by all means. Third grade, eh? The rate you're going, you'll get your Social Security and diploma on the same night. <laughs> no kidding, Phil. Uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you give up night school? Nothing doing. I don't want to be a maroon. <laughs> That's moron! Look, Phil, just wear your short pants all the time. Say, I wonder, um... I wonder if Dennis wants to come along Friday. Where is the kid, anyway? I called him yesterday, and his mother told me that he's been asleep ever since we got back from New York. Well, I'll be done. See, I didn't know the kid was so lazy. What do you mean, lazy? You made Dennis share your berth on the train, then you snored so loud he couldn't rest for four nights. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mary. It's impossible for me to snore because I recently had my adenoids removed. I had an operation. Some operation. Rochester hasn't even got a license. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. You thought he couldn't build me a barbecue pit either. <laughs> you should see it. Say, Don, speaking of our trip, I meant to ask you, is your wife, um, is your wife still mad at me for putting you both in one berth? Well, I thought she was, Jack, but strangely enough, as I was leaving the house this morning, she handed me a cake. A cake? Yes, she baked it especially for you. Especially for me, eh? I'll give it to you right after the broadcast. Hmm. Well, especially for me, eh? <laughs> well, thanks very much, Don, but you see I'm on a diet right now and I have to cut out fattening poison. I mean cake. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, though. Huh? Oh, Jack, don't be silly. Mrs. Wilson wouldn't poison you. She's one of the nicest girls I ever met. Listen, Mary, I saw a show in New York called Arsenic and Old Lace, and two of the sweetest old ladies you ever laid your eyes on bumped off a dozen men. <laughs> Twelve of them. Yes, but they gave them elderberry wine. What you can do with wine, you can do with cake. <laughs> I ain't eating it, sister. Oh, Jackson, don't act like a baby. All right, Phil, let's drop the cake and have a band number. Tell Peggy uh, thanks, Don. Well, how about a number, Phil? What are you going to play? Now, wait a minute, Jackson. You won't laugh if I tell you, will you? No, no. What's it going to be? Port and Peasant Overture. Are you kidding? Well, let's have it. I may be sorry I didn't eat that cake before this is over. Uh, that, uh, that was a special arrangement of Port and Peasant Overture played by Phil Harris and his peasants. There, there can't be a poet in that bunch. <laughs> that, um, that number was okay, Phil. You liked it, huh, Jackson? Yes, but I have one suggestion to make. If you're going to play a number like that every week, I think I'll have to augment your orchestra. Augment? Yes. Tell him what it means before he puts on his short pants again. <laughs> Phil, uh, augment means to increase or enlarge. For instance, you ought to add a bassoon to your orchestra. And a French horn. And a, and a harp. Sorry, Jackson, the harp's out. What do you mean? I had one once, and all the boys hung their socks on it. <laughs> oh, well, if you had a bassoon, you could hit them over the head for doing it. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our first play of the new season, we are going to... Well, look who's here. Hiya, Mr. Benny. Hello, everybody. Well, you certainly look rested now, Dennis. Boy, oh, boy, do I feel good. You want to wrap them, Miss Livingston? <laughs> Dennis. Behave yourself. Let him alone. I'll give him a toe hole so fast he won't know what hit him. Mary, put your coat back on. <laughs> Be a lady, will you? On this clam bake? How can you call this program a clam bake when Phil just played poet and peasant? <laughs> now, let's settle down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce, tomorrow, October 27th, is Navy Day. So tonight, in honor of this occasion, we will present our version of that stirring drama of the Naval Air Force. That epic of heroism, that sensational Warner Brothers production, Dive Bomber. 
Uh, thank you, Dive. You're a bomber. <laughs> hmm. Now, uh, in this sketch, uh, I will play the part of the young flight surgeon as portrayed on the screen by dashing, daring Errol Flynn, which happens to be the most important role in the picture. Now, let's see. But, Jack, I saw the picture, and I thought that Fred McMurray as the test pilot had the most important part. Who? McMurray? Yes, he did some very heroic things. In fact, the audience applauded him the night I saw it. They did? Oh. Well, Phil, then you'll be Errol Flynn, and I'm, I'm going to be Fred McMurray. I never drop Flynn that fast. <laughs> never mind. Now, it's all set. Phil is Errol Flynn, I'm Fred McMurray, and Dennis, you're going to be Ralph Bellamy. Oh, boy, he had the best part of the whole darn picture. Who? Bellamy? Yeah, he was a great doctor, and the whole story was built around him. It was? <laughs> well, now, let's see. Uh, Phil, you're going to be Errol Flynn. That's settled. Dennis, you'll be Fred McMurray, and I'll be Ralph Bellamy. Yes, that'll work out fine. Now, let's see. Uh, say, Jack. Yeah? If you ask me, Wayne Morris stole the whole picture. What, what? Who? <laughs> Wayne Morris? Yeah, he was terrific. No kidding? Well, fellas, it's all settled. I'm going to be Wayne Morris. <laughs> yeah. Good. He wasn't even in the picture. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going on here? I'm going to play Ralph Bellamy, and that's the end of it. Mary, you're going to be a nurse. And Don, you're going to be the B-19, so stick your arms out. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, this play will go on immediately after a song by Dennis Day. Go ahead, Dennis. Hold it a minute. Come in. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Benny. Can I see you about that now? Uh, yes, wait out in the hall. I'll be right with you. Excuse me, fellas. Say, that little boy looks familiar. Well, don't you recognize him, Don? That's the kid who was on the train with us last week. The one that said he was going to be a gag man for Bob Hope? Yeah, now Jack is trying to sign him up first. I'm going to open up the door and listen. Sure, sure, kid. I know Bob Hope's a nice guy. But why do you want to work for him? In the first place, he's very tough to write for. What are you talking about? I can write a thousand gags about his nose alone. <laughs> You think that's something? Listen, kid, I've got rheumatism and flat feet. And you see this bridge? Yeah. Look, it comes out. <laughs> well, I'm a cinch to write for. Now, what do you say? Well, what's your offer? Now, listen, kid. You're young and you've got your health. <laughs> now, look. Look, money we won't talk about. <laughs> The heck we won't. <laughs> hmm. This kid's going to be tough, but he's clever. Now, look, son. Uh, uh, by the way, what's your name? Barton. Belly Laugh Barton. <laughs> oh, uh, well, now, look, Belly. Uh, forget Hope. Uh, forget hope, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you thirty-seven fifty a week every Saturday night. How does that strike you? Well, I don't know. I'll have to talk it over with my manager. What do you have to talk it over for? Look, kid. Now sign here, right here on the bottom line. <laughs> Come on, kid. Okay, let me out of the corner. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's a deal, kid. See you at my house tomorrow morning. Come for breakfast and bring some coffee cake. So long. Goodbye. Here he comes, boys. Act down to lunch. Well, sorry to kept you waiting, fellas. Okay, Dennis, let's have your song. Belly Laugh Barton. Yeah, I hope he lives up to his name. <laughs> that was I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire, sung by Dennis Day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction of the evening. Our version of that sensational motion picture drama, Dive Bomber. And I'd like to announce that this production will be done entirely in Technicolor. How, how can you do Technicolor on the radio? We're on the red and blue networks with a green cast. <laughs> <laughs> a 
and belly laugh better do better than that one. <laughs> now, the opening scene is the laboratory of the famous flight surgeon, Dr. Bellamy, who at the moment is testing the reflexes of that ace aviator, Dennis McMurray. Curtain. Music. Hmm. The uh, Schneider test shows pilot fatigue not far from the chronic line. A silograph negative. What does the Ralph from Fontaine test show? <laughs> what does it show, uh, nurse? Pretty bad, doctor. Look at this chart. Hmm. I don't like it. This man's flying days are over. He's through. Washed up. You mean I'm not going to be an ace anymore? <laughs> To us, you'll always be an ace. <laughs> now, um... <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, uh, what, uh, what else is there to check on this man? Uh, why don't you test his knee, jerk? <laughs> That's why don't you test his knee, jerk? I did that already. Well, Lieutenant McMurray, I'm sorry. But there's nothing I can do. You're grounded. No, no. You can't do this to me. I belong in the air. I've given the best years of my life to aviation. When I black out, I want to be up there flying. Understand flying. Hmm. I knew I should have taken that part. <laughs> but I'm not beefing. This had to come sooner or later. Just tough to step out of the ring when the main event may be ready to start. It's tough, I tell you. It's tough. <laughs> no, I had to be Ralph Bellamy standing around like a dope. <laughs> oh, well, I motivate the story, anyway. you got to give me another chance, Doc. You hear? Because if you All don't... right, all right, I'll give you another chance. Stop acting. Get out of here. <laughs> Next time I'll see a picture before I cast it. Snap out of it, Doctor. Let's get on with these experiments. Oh, that's right. Uh, what am I working on today? Uh, you're trying to perfect a transparent parachute so you can get suntan on the way down. <laughs> no, that'll never be a success. Come in. Oh, hello, Commander Wilson. Good morning, Dr. Bellamy. I want to congratulate you on your experiments in counteracting aeroembolism. Thanks. What? <laughs> oh, oh, yes. I expect to have the arrows all emboled out before long. <laughs> By the way, Commander, have you located an assistant for me? Oh, yes, Dr. Bellamy. I've discovered a brilliant young graduate of Harvard Medical School. He's uh, waiting in the room right now in the waiting room. Uh, good, uh, good. <laughs> Come in, Dr. Flynn. How do you do? Dr. Flynn, Dr. Bellamy. Dr. Bellamy, Dr. Flynn. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde, by side. Please, Miss Crossmere. <laughs> Please. Hey, uh, she's not bad. I'm pleased to meet you, Dr. Flynn. So you're a Harvard man, eh? Yes, uh, who's the tomato? <laughs> Dr. Flynn. Uh, Commander Wilson tells me... Yes, I believe I have solved the problem of counteracting aeroembolism. Mm -hmm. For instance, why don't we make a bell? Well, Drum, don't you... Pneumatic, inflated before the dive. But that would compress the upper part of the body and stop the blood from leaving the brain. It can't miss, I tell you, it can't miss. <laughs> I had to be Bellamy. <laughs> the most important part, play it. Oh, well. That's a brilliant thought, Dr. Flynn. You'll get a medal for this. Oh, I don't want a medal. I'm not doing this for any paltry reward from human beings. Consider it my contribution to the progress of aviation. <laughs> contribution. I knew he'd louse it up. <laughs> now, look, Commander Wilson. Flynn's idea seems to be practical, but I've got a better one. What is it, Dr. Bellamy? I'll demonstrate. Hand me a pencil, Miss Crossmere. Here you are. Thanks. Don't thank me. I'm not doing this for any paltry reward from human beings. I gave you that pencil because it'll stop the blood from leaving the brain. A pencil? What do I care about a pencil? I've got dozens of them. Dozens of them, do you hear? 
and consider it my contribution to the progress of aviation. Even Crocsmere has a better part. <laughs> well, come on, Dr. Flynn. That bell of yours is a good idea. Let's get busy on it. Okay, Dr. Bellamy. Calling Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare reports a surgery. That's the other feature. This is dive bomber. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Come on, Flynn. We'll make that bell, or my name ain't... How high are we, McMurray? 26,000 feet and going up. Good. How does the belt feel? It's a little tight around the ankles. I'll pull it up. I tell you, Mac, this experiment is going to make me famous. Well, Dr. Flynn invented it. Why didn't you bring him along? Ouch! I'll twist your other wrist if you keep that up. How high are we now? 30,000 feet. You better put your oxygen mask on. I took it home. I'm going to wear it Halloween. But I feel pretty... Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter, Doc? I don't know. I felt a little dizzy there for a second. But but I'm all right. How how high are we now? 31,000. 31,000, eh? I got to I got to snap out of it. I'm feeling I feel kind of drowsy all of a sudden. Doc, Doc, what's the matter? I don't know. I guess it's the altitude. Uh, this is altitude kind of got me. So, pneumatic. It'll stop the blood from leaving the contribution. <laughs> yeah. Doc, wake up. Dr. Flynn, Dr. Bellamy. Dr. Bellamy, Dr. Flynn. Yeah. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Come the whistles. <laughs> Gee, he looks so peaceful, I think I'll count sheep and join him. One, two, three, four. No, that's an eagle. Four, five, six. Seven. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to turn the clock back to last Friday night and show you what happened when Jack and the rest of our gang went out and celebrated Halloween. The time, 7.30 Friday evening. The place, Jack's house in Beverly Hills. Take it away! I don't want to set the world on fire! Rochester. I just want to go where I can get to. <laughs> Rochester, stop complaining in rhythm and help me get into my Halloween costume. The gang will be here any minute. Hand me those horns. Here you are. Pardon the ignorance, boss, but what character are you struggling to convey? <laughs> my costume is very obvious. I've got on red underwear, a long tail, horns, and I'm carrying a pitchfork. Now, who am I? The man from the finance company. (laughs) I am not. I'm the devil. Now, hand me that mirror. Here you are. Thanks. No, I don't like this effect. These darn horns keep slipping slipping over to one side. The horns are all right. It's your toupee that slips. (laughs) Something wrong there. I don't know why I picked out a devil costume anyway. Of course, I bought this pair of horns. I should use them. Why don't you put one of them on your nose and go with a rhinoceros? No, I can't do that. Phil Harris is coming as Frank Buck and he'd shoot me. He'd love the excuse. I wonder if this tail is too long here. He was at the door, Rochester. Yes, sir. Come in. I could have done that myself. Rochester, when I tell you... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Mary, this is Halloween. I thought you were going to dress up tonight. Where's your costume? I've got it on. I'm Pocahontas. Pocahontas? In a mink coat? 
John Smith was nice to me. <laughs> Oh, you're a wampum digger, eh? <laughs> well, at least stick a feather in your hair. Make it believable. Say, what do you think of my outfit, Mary? Don't I look like the devil? Always. I mean my costume. I'm supposed to be Satan. Did you see my horn? Well, straighten up. You look like a toad. <laughs> Who ever heard of a red toad? There. Hey, boss, I'm going to a masquerade party tonight myself. Yeah, Rochester, what are you going to be? I'm going to close my eyes and go with the Smith Brothers' cough drop. <laughs> Well, that's not a bad idea. Say, Rochester, why don't you keep one eye open and go as a period? <laughs> How's that? I better keep both eyes open. My lady friends are over. <laughs> all right, do as you please. Jack, what are we going to do tonight? Where are we going? I got it all figured out. Listen to this. First, we'll go to Claudette Colbert's house, and then I'll take a piece of soap and write, Claudette loves Jack all over her window. Oh, you did that last year, and she came out and wrote, Jack who? <laughs> Well, this time she'll know Jack who. When Claudette comes out of the house, I'm going to grab her and give her a kiss. Now, there's only one guy kisses like Benny. You don't have to tell me, Deadlift. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to give you a good jab with my pitchfork if you don't look out. Well, anyway, after we live Claudette. Come in, come in. Well, look what's hopping through the door. For Pete's sake, what an outfit. Hello, Jack. Mary. Hello, Don. What are you supposed to be? Why, can't you tell? I'm a kangaroo. Well, sure enough, you certainly look realistic, Don, with those long ears sticking up in that great big pouch. <laughs> but say, say, I thought Dennis was coming with you. Where is the kid? Peekaboo. <laughs> Well, I'll be darned, a baby kangaroo. <laughs> Here, climb, uh, climb out, kid. Here, I'll help you. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Imagine coming as a little kangaroo. You know, I was going to come as a floor lamp. A floor lamp? Yeah, but when I screwed the bulbs in my ears, they wouldn't light up. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. Huh? Maybe I ought to see a doctor. <laughs> Dennis, you're not supposed to light up. <laughs> you know, Mary, someday I'll have to have a talk with that kid. Huh? By the way, Jack, isn't Phil going to join us tonight? Yeah, he'll drop by as soon as he finishes night school. Say, Dennis, while we're waiting around for him, let's hear that song you're going to do on the program Sunday. Yeah, get over to the piano, kid. Okay. Oh, say, Rochester, did you ask our boarder, Mr. Billingsley, to tune the piano? He's very good at it, you know. We should have never let him monkey with it, boss. Oh, what's he done now? That man's crazy. He cleaned the piano keys with dental floors. <laughs> oh, Mr. Billingsley must think he's a dentist again. It's a fine way to clean piano keys. He said the black ones were decayed, so he pulled them out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He broke eight needles trying to give the leg Novocaine. <laughs> Well, it's my own fault, I guess. Well, do the best you can, Dennis. Go ahead. Wait a minute. I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, hello, Phil. Are you still at night school? We're waiting for you. What? He's keeping you after school. What happened, Jack? Well, Phil got a zero in spelling, so he gave the teacher a hot foot. <laughs> Look, Phil, is your teacher anywhere near the phone? Well, well tell her your father wants to talk to her. Yeah, yeah, your father. What are you going to do, Jack? I'm going to pretend to be Phil's father. You know, I'll talk like an old rube. Well, you got the right underwear for it. <laughs> Quiet, now, don't mix me up. Hello? Oh, hello, miss. This is Twitch Harris, senior, talking. <laughs> now, look, ma'am, i got to see my boy Philip right away, so I wish you'd let him off tonight. I'll write you a note explaining everything. I said I'd write you a note. <laughs> That's a good one. What'd she say? She wants to know how come I can write and Phil can't. <laughs> Thanks a lot, ma'am. Say, what are you doing later? <laughs> well, you can't shoot a man for trying. <laughs> Goodbye. 
Well, it's all set, fellas. Phil will be here pretty soon. You know, that teacher sure had a sweet voice. I could kind of go for her. But, Jack, you don't even know what she looks like. Anything he gets is gravy. <laughs> I don't know about that, sister. Sing, Dennis. See this pitchfork, Mary? You're going to get it. Now, you wait. Hey. Hey, that was all right, Dennis. That song ought to go over swell Sunday. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Can I have something to eat? Yeah, I'm hungry, too. I haven't got any sandwiches. I've got donuts and cider. That's all you're supposed to have on Halloween. Uh, bring in the donuts, Rochester. They're right here, boss. Oh, yes. Here, have a donut, Mary. They're nice and fresh. I made them myself. Jeepers, look at the size of the holes you got in them. <laughs> Never mind. They look like ladies' garters. <laughs> Quiet, will you? Oh, what she said. <laughs> No use waiting. I gotta have a talk with that kid. <laughs> Here, Don. Don, have a donut. Have a donut and some of this sweet cider. Thanks. Now, I think I'll have a glass of that myself. Pretty strong, Jack. Strong? Let me taste this. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what did you put in this side? A little Central Avenue vitamin. <laughs> There's gin in there. Now, now throw that cider out the window. You ain't gonna throw mine out. Dennis, you're not drinking any hard cider. You're a baby kangaroo. Oh, I can't hop on milk. <laughs> Let Don hop. Now, you get back in that pouch. Okay. See you later, fellas. <laughs> now, stay there. Gee, I, I wish Phil would get here so we can go oh, ahead. Oh, uh, Jack, look who's coming. Where? Oh, yes, it's Mr. Billingsley. Look, he's dressed like Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Having a little party, I see. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, uh, you're dressed as Marie Antoinette. Are you going to a masquerade? No, my head aches, so I'm going to have it cut off. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh I, I thought you were celebrating Halloween like we are. You see, I'm Satan, and Miss Livingston is Pocahontas, and Mr. Wilson is a kangaroo. I used to be an alligator once, and now I'm an old bag. <laughs> Well, well, uh, see you later. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> hmm. Strange fellow. The other morning for breakfast, he swallowed a raw egg and then drank boiling water for three minutes. <laughs> I don't know. Phil, we want to get going. I'm sorry, but I didn't have time to put no costume on. Don't worry, your tailor takes care of that. <laughs> hey, Phil, uh, what, uh, what happened between you and the teacher? Oh, she got mad at me when we were having our spelling lesson. Oh, what was the trouble? She asked me to spell Pomeranian. Pomeranian? No, I said D-O-G, take it or leave it. <laughs> well, at least you knew Pomeranian was a dog. That's something, huh? Well, we're all here, so come on, fellas, let's go. Hey, Don, you put on a lot of weight since last week. That's Dennis. It's a long story. <laughs> uh, come on, everybody, let's go. Oh, Rochester, Rochester, before you leave, be sure and lock the garage so that nobody damages the Maxwell. Okay. Remember last year, some kid got in there and turned it over. Yeah, we drove around for three days without even noticing. <laughs> I noticed it. it was bumpy as anything. <laughs> all right, this way, fellas. We'll all go out the side door. Oh, that's right. Boy, we really, we really have fun tonight. You know, kids, first we'll go next door to Ronald Coleman's house. See? 
And then we'll Jack, get... Jack, here comes that little boy you hired as a gag man. Let's take him along. Oh, Belly Laugh Barton, eh? <laughs> ah, hello, kid. Hello, Mr. Benny. Say, Belly, do you uh, want to go out with us tonight? We're going to ring doorbells and raise the dickens. You're a little adolescent, aren't you, bub? <laughs> enjoy ourselves. Sorry you won't come along. By the way, how's the uh, program coming along for Sunday? If I tell you, you won't have any fun tonight. <laughs> well, get busy and concentrate. Come on, fellas. Now, I'll tell you what, kid. First, we'll sneak across the lawn to Ronald Coleman's house and put some white paint on the doorknob, see? Then we'll ring the bell, and when he comes out, we'll run like the dick. <laughs> Gee, I, I rang Coleman's bell three times. Why doesn't he come out? Maybe he went to a party or something. Couldn't be a big party or I'd have been invited. Ronnie and I attend the same affairs. Only he doesn't have to crawl in the window. Well, these Hollywood parties, who knows whether you got an invitation or not. <laughs> hey, fellas, I've got an idea. As long as Coleman isn't home, let's take this beautiful sundial here and put it over on my front lawn. His sundial? Yeah, it'll be a swell gag. Three years ago, you took his flagpole. When's the gag over? <laughs> Oh, get in the Halloween spirit, will you? Come on, fellas, give me a hand with this dial. Hey, Jack, look. There's a policeman walking by the house. A policeman? Uh-oh. Hello there. Is that you, Mr. Coleman? Get this, fellas. Uh, right, Joe. Thanks for asking, old boy. Terribly decent of you. Good night. Hip, hip. <laughs> mm, I, I, I certainly pulled the blighter. Take that donut out of your eye. You're not Coleman anymore. Oh, yes. Say, fellas, we'll never budge this sundial. It's too heavy. I'll have to phone for some movers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Look, let's, let's go over to Basil Rathbone's. Does he live near here, Jackson? Yeah, right past my house on the other side of the street. Come on. Ooh, I'm this pale I keep tripping on. <laughs> Hmm, look at that light in my kitchen. Belly lavage, and they're eating me out of house and home. All the writers with ulcers, and I had to get him. <laughs> oh, well. Now, follow me. Follow me across the street, fellas. Oh, we'll go to Rathbone's house. Quiet now. He will fix him good. Which house is it, Jackson? Wait a minute. I don't know whether this is Rathbone's house or the next one. I think it's this one. No, no, it's the next one. This is where Charles Boyer lives. Oh, that's right. Say, let's pull some gag on him. Yeah, maybe he's got a sundial we can lift. <laughs> no, I'll just sneak up and ring his doorbell. Wait here, fellas. Hey, Jackson, Nick, here comes that cop again. Uh-oh. Hello there. Is that you, Mr. Boyer? Here I go again, fellas. Oh, good evening, officer. <laughs> Beautiful night. Beautiful. Yes, it is. Good night, Mr. Boyer. Bon Sawyer. <laughs> hmm. Lucky I can speak French. <laughs> hey, Jack, let's get away from here. The policeman's liable to come back. Right at that. I'll tell you what. Let's go through this driveway and sneak over to Bathroom's backyard. Now, follow me, fellas. Everybody quiet. <laughs> We are. See, it's dark tonight. Hey, where did Phil disappear to? I don't know. Where is he, Don? He was with us a minute ago. Have you seen him, Dennis? He's not in here. <laughs> of course not. Here he comes now. Where have you been, Phil? Boy, am I wet. Why didn't you tell me that Rathbone had a swimming pool? Why don't you watch where you're going? I swallowed enough water to last me the rest of my life. Well, it didn't hurt you to go on the wagon, even for a second. <laughs> now, wait here, kid. I'm going up and knock on the door. When Rathbone comes out, hide in the bushes. Wow, will he be furious? Oh, be careful now, Jack. Don't worry about me. Now, quiet. Get ready, fellas. Yahoo! 
Don those milk bottles. I hope I didn't cut myself. Am I bleeding, Mary? With what? <laughs> With blood, I've got it. The idea of leaving... Work like this one on, Jack. Quick, pick me up. Here comes Rappel. Quiet, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Who's there? Anybody there? I say, is anybody there? Ah, must be some of those Halloween pranksters. Now, look here, you children. I don't want any more of this disturbance. I've got to get up early in the morning. I'm making a picture. What a ham. <laughs> Come on, I catch you around here again tonight. I'll give you all a sound good thrashing. Now, go away, all of you. Cat! <laughs> oh, boy, is he, is he burned up. Boy, am I going to make his life miserable tonight. Wait a minute. What do you got against Rathbone? Jack hates him because he can act. <laughs> That's all. I can see him imitate Boyer like I did. Now, fellas, this time I'm going to grab this big rock here and throw it up against the door. Oh, you can't take those steps again, eh, Daddy? <laughs> now, I can climb, only this will be more annoying. Now, here goes. I'm going to throw the rock. One. Phil, what are you doing back there? Nothing. Well, get away. <laughs> Two. Three. Go! Holy smoke, I broke a window. There goes the porch light again. Quick, fellas, run. He's coming out. Well, I'll be... Hey, what is this? Come on, Jack, hurry! Run, run! I can't run. That darn Phil Harris tied my tail to this bush. <laughs> Gee, what a spot. I hope Rathbone doesn't see me. Did I ever get my hands on the... Ah! Who's hiding there? Who's in back of that bush? Hmm. Right now, I'd give $1,000 to be playing Salt Lake City. <laughs> Gee, here he comes. Well, may I inquire the name of the moron behind that mask who goes around breaking windows? Who are you? Gee. Come, 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 man. Speak up. Ah, <clears throat> oh, Basil, I'm only making it a joke. It is me, Charles Boyer. Mr. Benny, your accent is revolting. <laughs> oh, 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 hello, Basil. Hello, how did you know it was me? You wore that same costume last Halloween when you tipped over my dog house. Oh. I want that dog back. Where is he? <laughs> well, he had pups today. You're a fine Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Now, look, Basil, I'm sorry I threw that rock. It was an accident. Accident or no accident, you'll pay for that window. All right, all right, I'll pay for it. Mr. Day. Benny, what are you doing there? I'm untying my tail. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> I'm very sorry about the whole thing, Basil. I won't bother you anymore tonight. I'll go and join my gang. I suppose you're going to continue this mischievous business. Well, well, listen, to tell you the truth, we're going over to Charles Lawton's house. You know those flower pots he's got on his front porch? Yes, well, listen, we're going to tip him over one by one. He'll go crazy when he hears that racket. I dare say, Lawton is a fierce temper. You said it. <laughs> well, so long, Basil. Happy Halloween. Goodbye. Lawton House, eh? Teleport. Wait a minute, Jack, old boy. I'm going with you. <laughs> what? You going to join us? I'll tell my wife. Uh, be back later, darling. Hey, fellas, have I got a surprise for you. Come on, Basil. Yippee! Here, listen, well, here's what we'll do. First, we'll go to Lawton's house. Then we'll go over to Claudette Colbert's and ring the doorbell, see? And when she comes out, I'll grab her and kiss her. And you can kiss her, too. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Mr. Rathbone for appearing on our program tonight. Good night, everybody. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our versatile master of ceremonies, who started work this week on a new motion picture. Yes, sir. A man who is as much at home in front of a camera as he is before a microphone. Like you said, I'm versatile. Say. <laughs> A man who has a profile like John Barrymore, and have you seen him lately? Jack Benny. Hmm. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Chubby, uh, you can rip me 
Uh, you can rip me about it all you want to, but it sure feels good to be making a picture again. I tell you, Don, that's really my racket. Well, Jack, I must admit that I do enjoy you on the screen immensely. I really got a big kick out of your last picture. Uh, you know, the, the one you made with Fred Allen. With Allen? Uh, wait a minute. That wasn't my last one, Don. See, I made Charlie's aunt after that. Remember when I was dressed like a lady? Oh, yes. Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I didn't get to see that one. You didn't see Charlie's aunt? <laughs> hmm. No, I meant to, but somehow I just didn't get around to it. Oh. By the way, Jack, who's the director of your current movie? Is it someone you've had before or somebody new? Hmm. Didn't get around to it, eh? <laughs> now, look, Don, <laughs> I hesitate bringing it up right now, but you've been on this program eight years, and... And you know our rule about not seeing my pictures. <laughs> so, uh, so what about it? Oh, yes, Jack, I forgot. Here you are. Thanks. <laughs> now, I, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I hate, uh... <laughs> I hate to, uh, I hate to do this, Don, but if I make an exception of you, they'll all expect it. You know, rules is rules. Anyway, answering your question... Oh, here's your change, Don. Thanks. Um, <laughs> answering your question, the director of my latest screen vehicle is none other than Lubitsch. Ernst Lubitsch. Lubitsch? Well, that's wonderful. That's a great break for you, Jack. It is? Why, certainly. You know, there's a saying in Hollywood that Lubitsch can even make a lamppost act. Don. <laughs> Don, any resemblance between me and a lamppost is purely coincidental. I'm slim, yes, but that's all. Anyway, Don, as I was saying, it sure feels good to be in front of a camera again. Right back where I belong. Uh, what was that? Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Uh, what was that you said? I was telling Don I'm very happy. I'm right back where I belong. Oh, selling suits, eh? <laughs> I mean pictures. I'm making a movie. Oh, that's right. You haven't sold a suit since you worked in your father's store in Waukegan. Of course. That's over 20 years ago. The one you're wearing held up nice. <laughs> Mary, one thing about my father's merchandise, it lasted and lasted. In fact, Dad used to have a slogan, buy this suit and you'll get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> we sold plenty of them that way. Well, I'll have to admit, Jack, that outfit you're wearing is very snappy. Certainly. How do you like the pants? Get a load of the cuffs. You look like puss in boots. <laughs> When my feet get cold, I roll them down. I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> and incidentally, Mary, instead of coming in here with those wisecracks, why don't you congratulate me on the start of my new picture? You know, uh, Carol Lombard is my leading lady. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Carol Lombard is my love interest. Lombard and Benny, hey, that's quite a team. Have you many romantic scenes with her, Jack? Yes, lucky girl. Imagine. <laughs> so, look, imagine I, I make love to her all day long, and then at 6 o'clock she drives home to Gable. <laughs> <laughs> but, say, that Gable is a pretty good leading uh, man himself. You know, he's no slouch. Oh, Jack, you're just as attractive to women as Clark Gable any day. Well, I wouldn't say that, Mary. That's sweet of you, but Clark is a pretty handsome guy, you know. Oh, you're just being modest. You don't hear women talk about you like I do. Oh, Mary, stop. Well, I, I, I'll admit I'm not homely, but uh, but what what do the women say about me? You asked for it, brother. Never mind. <laughs> you, you always have to start something, don't you? Always. Say, Mr. Benny, I heard you talking before, and you think Carol Lombard is pretty good looking, don't you? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, what was that you said? I forgot now. What a brain. Dennis, you said something about Carol Lombard being very good looking. Oh, yes. Well, I'd go with a girl that's better looking than any movie star you ever saw. Oh, you go with a girl? She is. Well, say. What's her name, Dennis? Thelma Gray, Crestview 7071. <laughs> oh, well, you, you didn't have to give me your telephone number. I might as well. You'll force it out of me later. <laughs> Now, 
Now, hold on, young man. When did I ever threaten you to get a girl's phone number? Remember in New York when you took me to the top of the Empire State Building? Never mind. And you held me over the edge by one leg? <laughs> I was just showing Al Smith how strong I was. Anyway, you're lucky you didn't go out with that girl. You've still got your watch. <laughs> Well, so much for your love life, kid. Now, uh, how about a song? Okay. I'm going to sing Carry Me Back to the Lone Prairie, and I dedicate it to the Palm Springs Vaqueros. Who cares, you little squealer? <laughs> Go ahead with your song. Crescue 7071. I must remember that. Hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Jello program? Why aren't you listening to us? <laughs> Mary. Find out who that is. Hello. Hello, this is Barton speaking. Billy Last Barton. Is Grandma there? <laughs> Just a second. It's for you, Jack. It's that kid you hired for a gag man. Oh, oh, Billy, huh? Oh, oh hello, Billy. Uh, what's on your mind? Listen, <laughs> I've got a terrific gag you can pull on Phil Harris tonight. Is he there yet? No. No, what's the gag? Well, this afternoon I told him to ask you how many hairs on a monkey's face. Uh-huh. And when he asks you, you say, the next time you shave, count him. Oh, oh. Well, now, wait a minute, Belly. That's kind of an old gag, isn't it? Look, you know it and I know it. But the younger generation never heard of it. <laughs> well, uh... Well, maybe you're right, Belly. Are you sure? Uh, are you sure Phil will ask me that? Yeah, and when you pull the answer, you'll never know what hit him. Yeah, you really burn. Thanks, kid. And listen, I'll call you up after the show. Let you know how it went over. Uh, where can I reach you? Crestview seven zero seven one. What? Hey, wait a minute, Belly. Hey, Belly. Hmm. Oh well, that's a good gag he gave me anyway. The next time you shave, count them. I must remember that. Sing, Dennis. I can hardly wait. Very good. That was Carry Back to the Lone Prairie, sung by Dennis Day. And, Dennis, I must say that your voice is improving every week. No kidding. Someday you'll be another Bing Crosby. Well, look who's here. I'm so glad you were able to make it tonight, Phil. Sorry I'm late, pal, but I was out in my car listening to the program. Oh, listen to the program, eh? Well, how is it? Jackson, you need me. <laughs> Well, um... Well, for your information, Phil, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, Benny need Harris like apple need worm. <laughs> and incidentally, that glint in my eye is Jimmy Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard him last night. Oh, don't get excited, Jackson. It was only a rib. Uh-huh. Hey, what's all this ballyhoo about you making a new picture? That's right, Phil. I started working on it this week. Well, here, I ain't going to see it. Thanks. <laughs> hmm. The picture isn't made yet, and already it's grossed $10. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but I, uh... I must tell Alexander Corder about that, um... But I wouldn't jump to a conclusion, Phil. You see, Carol Lombard is in it, and Lubitsch is the director. Not Ernest Lubitsch. No, not Ernest. The name is Ernst. Ernst. <laughs> Look at his pivot tooth go around. <laughs> well, if it stops on the red, you win. <laughs> You know, I can go along with a gag. <laughs> Believe me. Say, Mr. Benny. Yeah? Is that the same Mr. Lubitsch that directed Marlene Dietrich and Margaret Sullivan and Maurice Chevalier? Yes, sir. And Claudette Colbert and Gary Cooper and Greta Garbo? <laughs> yep. And now he's directing me. Is he slipping? No. <laughs> No, he's not slipping. The trouble with this gang, you're all too close to me. You don't realize I'm a good actor. Say, Jackson, how'd you ever land a big director like that? You mean Lubitsch? Jack held him over the Empire State Building until he signed the contract. 
Oh, stop. To hear you talk, you think I was the strongest guy in the world. Now, let's cut out this nonsense and go on with the program. Let's have a number, Phil, before Miss Livingston dreams up something else. All right, what do you want to hear? Music, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Now, go ahead. Okay. Oh, by the way, Jackson, I want to ask you something. Yeah? Yeah, what is it? How many hairs on a monkey's face? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Phil. Oh, my goodness, I forgot the answer. <laughs> Mary, Mary, get me belly laugh on the phone quick. The number is Crestview 7071. You didn't forget that, you wolf. <laughs> Oh, never mind. It's too late to pull the gag now. Let's see. Phil is supposed to say to me how many hairs on a monkey's face. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, what do you want? Boss, this is the last straw. Either you get rid of Mr. Billingsley or I'm going back home to Arabia. <laughs> oh, don't get so excited. What's our border done now? Well, you know that suit of armor we got in the hall? Yes. And you know how it's holding that big spear? Yes. Well, I was whacking the floor in front of it just now, and the first thing I knew, I took off. <laughs> oh. Oh, Mr. Billingsley is in it, eh? What in the world is he doing in that suit of armor? This week, he's King Arthur. <laughs> King Arthur? Yeah, better come home early. He's going to hold court in the dining room tonight. Well, that's just silly. If you remember the legend, King Arthur's knight gathered at a round table. Our table is square. It's round now. He saw it on the corner. <laughs> well, this is your fault, Rochester. You know how eccentric Mr. Billingsley is. How did he ever get a hold of a saw? A friend sent it to him in a loaf of bread. <laughs> table is a genuine antique. Save the corners, Rochester. I'll think of something. Now, look, I'll be home soon, so let Mr. Billingsley wear that suit of armor. What was that? What happened? King Arthur just fell off his horse. Horse? What horse? He's got a saddle on Carmichael. Oh, my goodness. Well, look, Rochester, I'll be home soon, so humor Billingsley. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I finished making those Christmas cards for Mr. Lubitsch. All right. All right, hang up. He'll like them, boss. Right under the Santa Claus, I got his name in big silver letters. Ernest Lubitsch. That's Ernst Lubitsch. Ernst... Now do them over. How many T's in Ernst... <laughs> Just one. It sounds like more. Now, goodbye. If you want anything done right, you got to do it yourself. All right, Phil, let's have your band number. Okay. Wait a minute. Answering your question, Phil, the next time you shave, count them. Ha <laughs> ha, I knew I'd think of it. <laughs> that was Wham Bang Crash Zowie, <laughs> played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> Phil, I've got to say one thing about your arrangements. You certainly take care of the brass section. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. I got three violins in the band, and they're playing all the time. Yeah, but who can hear them? <laughs> Another thing, two pianos. What do you got two piano players for? They're Siamese twins. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, see, I didn't know that. Uh, Siamese twins, eh? Didn't you see the three of us dancing at Charlie Foy's the other night? <laughs> Yes, but I thought I was drunk. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Yeah, I couldn't understand it. I only had ginger ale. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday, we want you all to listen in. Because we're going to present our annual drama of the gridiron. Yes, sir, we're all going to play football. We're really going to kick it around. We kick it around every Sunday. <laughs> Never mind. And I would also like to announce... Say, Jackson, uh, look, do you mind if I leave now? I've got a friend waiting for me out in the hall. What? Well, he just got in town a few days ago, and I'm having dinner with him. I'm sorry, Phil, but your friend can very well wait till the program's over. That's a fine way to treat Leo DeRocha. I don't care who... Leo DeRocha? You mean the manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers? Yeah, he's sitting right out in the hall. Well, what are you waiting for? Bring him in. Bring him in. Sure, a guest star for nothing. <laughs> Mary, I just want to say hello. I know him very well. Bring him in, Phil. Okay. 
So, Leo, Leo's in town, eh? Hey, Mr. Benny, who's Leo DeRocha? I just told you, he's manager of them bums. <laughs> Don't you remember, Dennis? I bet you five dollars Brooklyn would win the World Series. Oh, yes. How did that ever come out? <laughs> I'll tell you later, kid. Hmm. Well, fellas, here's that man. Well, come on in, Leo. Hiya, Jackson. Glad to see you. This is quite a surprise, Leo. I, I didn't think you'd get in town till next week. Uh, where are you staying? I'm living over at Georgie Raff's house. Oh, Raff's, eh? Well, uh, well, why didn't you come over to my place, Leo? You'd love it there. Quiet surroundings. Only ten minutes from Hollywood, and I've I got a 40-foot heated swimming pool. Now, I know. I got your folder. <laughs> oh, well... Then what made you pick out Raft's place? Well, you don't understand, Jackson. I'm Georgie's guest. I'm living there for nothing. Oh. Oh, I see. Guys like Raft that are ruining the tourist business. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, Mary, I wanted Leo to be my guest, too. I wasn't going to charge him. Oh, Leo, this is Mary Livingston. Well, hello, Miss Livingston. Or may I call you Mary? I've listened to you so often on the radio, I feel I almost know you. Thanks. Gee, how can such a sweet fellow slug an umpire? <laughs> Mary. It's easy, sister. <laughs> Good, good, good. And Leo, uh, Leo, uh, good, good. Leo, uh, <laughs> Leo, this is Don Wilson, our announcer, and Dennis Day, our young tenor. Hello, fellas. I'm glad to know you, Leo. Say, I was wondering about the World Series, Mr. DeRosha. Who won, the Dodgers or the Yankees? Is that Mick looking for trouble? <laughs> no, no, no. No, forget it, Leo. It's a long story. But, Leo, remember when I saw you that first game at the Yankee Stadium, and I said to you... How does it look, kid? And I said, we'll moiter him? Yeah. And then you lost four games out of five. What happened? Well, you can't tell about those things. It's like your radio program. You don't have a good one every week, do you? No, but we, we don't have four bad ones out of five. Look, Jackson, you've been called bums as often as we have. <laughs> oh, I... Look at I... I didn't look at it quite that way. Come know? on, Leo. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute, Phil. I want to talk to him. Say, Leo, uh, didn't I hear you... I mean, weren't you on Fred Allen's program a few weeks ago? Yeah. What a sweet guy. I got laughs on his show. You'd laugh here if you'd read your lines right. You know? <laughs> don't ad live with me, brother. I'm pretty fast on those answers. Now, go on. You don't even know how many hairs on a monkey's face. Oh, yeah? Well, the next time I shave, I'll count them. <laughs> What am I saying? <laughs> that was wrong. Give me that again, Leo. Come on, Leo. Will you? Let's go. Georgie's waiting for us across the street at the tropics. Come oh. on. Okay. Georgie, is Raff having dinner with you two guys? Yes. You want to join us? Sure, I'll be glad to. Oh, Don, carry on with the show, will you? Who am I going to talk to, Dennis? Mary is here. Stick out your stomach and she's good for three jokes. <laughs> Come on, Leo. Let's go, Phil. Come on. Well, Leo, I'm sure glad you came out to Hollywood. No hard feelings, even though I lost a little dough on the Dodgers. Reminds me, I owe Jesse $50. But I want to tell you something, Leo. You got a great ball club there. And next time, you'll be right back in the series. I know I'm going to bet on you, and I'll bet on you every time you play. That's me. I'm a sixteen-year-old. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, and no doubt most of you will have turkey for dinner. That's right. So this evening, without further ado, we bring you a chestnut for your dressing, Jack Benny. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, thanks so much for that introduction. <laughs> it was not only topical, but floppical. <laughs> chestnut for your dressing. Well, in my opinion, Jack, it was a very clever gag. I thought of it all by myself while I was shaving this morning. 
And you didn't cut your throat? I can't understand it. <laughs> Anyhow, Don, it'll uh, soon be Thanksgiving, and I love you. By the way, uh, would you and the little woman like to come over to my house next Thursday for a nice wild duck dinner? Thanks, Jack. We'll be very glad to. Wild duck, huh? Yep, I went hunting yesterday morning, and as usual, I brought home the limit, three ducks. Beauties, too. Huh? But, Jack, the limit is ten ducks. Oh, I mean on one shot, Don. I... <laughs> you see, I don't go out hunting and bang away like it's Fourth of July, you know. Three ducks with one shot. My goodness, I had no idea you were such an expert hunter. Oh, sure, Don. For me, that's nothing, you know. Well, I'd say that's darn good. By the way, Jack, what kind of a gun do you use? My... my gun? Oh, it's just a plain, ordinary, double-breasted shotgun. <laughs> It, uh, it does the trick, though. You mean double barrel, don't you? What? Oh, oh, yes, double barrel. It's a Westchester. Well, this I is I never miss with it. You know, I really never, never miss it. This certainly is news. Benny the Sportsman. Tell me, what'd you get yesterday? Mallards or canvas bags? I, I beg pardon, Don? <laughs> uh, what was that? I said, what did you get? Mallards or canvas bags? Yes, sir. Hmm. <laughs> But uh, I want to tell you something, Don. Well, what were they? Mallards or canvas bags? They were ducks. Quack, quack. If you don't want to come to dinner, say so. Hmm. I suppose every time I shoot a duck, I have to go up to him and say, My name is Benny. What's yours? <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't mean to. Okay, okay. Forget it. But believe me, Don, there's no thrill in the world like letting, getting out at five in the morning, hopping into that rowboat, and waiting for those ducks to fly by. Yes, there's no question about it. That's real excitement. By the way, Jack, uh, do you use a retriever? <laughs> well, I, uh... Beg pardon, Don? <laughs> Do I use a what? A retriever. You know, a dog that swims out and gets the ducks after you shoot them. A dog, a dog that swims... Hey, that's an idea. <laughs> That'll save Rochester from getting wet all the time. <laughs> Wait till I tell him, huh? Why, Jack, you don't mean to say that Rochester jumps into that cold water. Yes, and he brings back those ducks without a tooth mark on them. <laughs> Except once when I accidentally hit him on top of the head with an oar. <laughs> Anyway, Don, be sure and come to dinner and you'll taste the finest. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello, Mama. Mama? Yeah, she finally got a radio set. Oh. Hello, Mama. Keep up the payment. <laughs> See, now she can listen to us. Oh, say, Mary, I went out hunting yesterday and I brought you a little present. Here you are. Some beautiful duck feathers. Here. What do I want with duck feathers? You can put them on a hat or something. What can I do with them? Glue them on your chest. It's going to be a cold winter. <laughs> Uh, they'll just fit on my tattooed eagle. I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> anyway, if you don't want them, I'll give them to Dennis. He'll think of something. Where'd you get those feathers anyway? I told you, I went hunting yesterday. I go every year. Remember last year when, uh, Paul, when you were with me? Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you tell Don what happened? Never mind. What was it, Mary? Jack was in a rowboat when some ducks flew by, and boy, was he excited. Oh. So he pulled the trigger too quick, shot a hole in the boat, and came home with 18 trout. <laughs> Well, they were delicious, fried in butter. And the way you explained that hole to the owner of the boat. Well, it could have happened. It could not. It could, too. How can a boat be torpedoed in Lake Henshaw? <laughs> All right, forget it. it was years ago. And that's the last time I'll ever take you ducking. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Well, kids, here's your tickets. Front row center. Best in the house. Tickets? What ticket? Here, Mary, now look. Hold them to Wednesday night and get there early. I don't want you to miss a thing. Wait a minute, Phil. What are those tickets for? Well, it says right there on them. And you guys don't think I can act, huh? Well, I'll be done. Get a load of this, fellas. The Hollywood Night School, third grade dramatic club, <laughs> invites you to a special Thanksgiving play entitled The Courtship of Miles Standish. Well... Who are you, Phil? Miles Sanders? Now, let her read it. Go ahead, Mary. This play stars Willie Shapiro as Miles Sanders. Hmm. Butch Peterson as John Alden. Go on, go on. <laughs> and Philip Harris as Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Priscilla. That's me. I'm the heroin. <laughs> That's heroin. Heroin. So, uh, Phil, um... <laughs> Phil, uh, you take the girls' part, eh? Yeah, ain't that a novelty? Well, not exactly, Phil. If you remember, I recently played the female lead in Charlie's Aunt. Yeah, but you were an old bag. I'm young and tender. <laughs> Listen, Harris, I'll put on a sweater with you any day. <laughs> Any day, brother. The courtship of Miles Standish. Eh? Say, that ought to be very interesting, Phil. Yeah. Now, look, fellas, get this plot. Miles Standish is the captain of the soldiers in Plymouth, Mass. And he knows plenty about fighting them Indians. But when it comes to clinching with a blonde, the kid ain't half. Uh-huh. Anyhow, Captain Standish sees this beautiful doll, Priscilla. That's me with my curls combed out. <laughs> Hmm. And I'm sitting by the window in my cottage spinning a wheel. What are you doing, playing roulette? I don't know. I don't say. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Anyhow, Phil, don't tell us the plot now. You'll spoil the surprise. <laughs> what a character. Oh, Mary, would you mind telling our beautiful young pilgrim maiden to put down her spinning wheel and direct a band number? Why don't you speak for yourself, Jackson? <laughs> Go. Go ahead and play, will you? Uh, hold it, Chrissy. <laughs> Come in. Telegram for Mary Livingston. Right here, bud. Give him a tip, will you, Jack? Give him a tip. Give him a tip. Well, it's your program. Okay, okay. Here you are, bud. Oh, goody. A ticket to Miles Standish. <laughs> Get out of here. Every time I look at his head, I want to play tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Who's the wire from, Mary? It's a mama. Dear Mary, program coming in fine. How can Jack have the heart to shoot a duck when he walks like one? Well, the old battle axe is still punching him out. <laughs> Belly Laugh Barton gave us that gag. Play, Phil. Why did she have to buy a radio? <laughs> that, uh, that was This Time, The Dreams on Me, played by Pilgrim Harris and his Plymouth Rock. Plymouth meaning the boys have landed musically, and rocks meaning I wish I had some. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as we announced last Sunday, the football season being in full swing, tonight the Benny Athletic Actors will present their annual drama of the gridiron entitled He Fumbled the Ball, or Who Tickled the Tackle. <laughs> Now, as usual, I will play the part of Dennis. Dennis, I wish you'd get here on time. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Benny, but I couldn't find a place to park my car. Dennis, you don't have to drive around the streets all day. There's a parking lot next door where you can leave your car for 15 cents. How do you know? I heard about it. <laughs> I can go along with a gag. <laughs> Now, where was I? Say, Mr. Benny. What? I heard a broadcast last night that made my blood boil. It ought to burn you up, too. Why, who was funny? I mean, what, uh... <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I was over at my girl's house necking with her, and she got bored and turned on the radio. Well, naturally. So? So we listened, and there was a guy on the air that sounded just like you, and he even used your name, Jack Benny. Uh, Dennis, uh, that was me on the air last night. I was doing a special broadcast for NBC's 15th anniversary. Then who played the part of Don Wilson? That was Wilson himself. And if you'd have been with us, I'd still have to explain it to you. Gosh, was that really you and Don? Certainly. We did a comedy act. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Gee, it was so lousy, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Look, kid. Kid, you just... You just didn't get the idea of our act. We were very good. Then why did my girl turn off the radio and go back to me? I don't know. <laughs> what a kid. And now, ladies and gentlemen, getting back to our drama, I will play the part of Flash Benny, the famous football coach of Flatfoot College. <laughs> 
Oh, Jack, why don't you let someone else be the coach? You don't know anything about football. I don't, eh? Let me tell you something. When I was on the team at Waukegan High, they used to call me Tiger Benny. That's because you scratched everybody with your long fingernails. <laughs> they called me Tiger because when I played, I was a snarling, vicious animal. Like on payday? <laughs> What was that, Dennis? What was that? Watch out for those fingernails, kid. No quiet. Now, let's get back to our casting. Phil, you're going to be right end. Dennis, you're going to be left end. And Don... Yes, Jack? You're going to be everybody in between. So loosen your belt. Now, Mary... You mean I'm going to be right guard, left guard, right tackle, left tackle, and center? Yes. Well, I must be quite an actor. Uh, take it any way you want to. <laughs> Uh, now, Mary, inasmuch as we're short of men, uh, you'll have to play on the team, too. I'm not going to be a man. You are, too. I'm not going to wear football pants. And you're going to wear football pants. They better have lace on them. <laughs> Never mind. Ooh, what she said. <laughs> Dennis. No use talking. I must have a talk with that kid. Now, I play... Now, I... Dennis, did you ever see Our Wilderness? You must see it sometime. Now, our, um, our play, ladies and gentlemen, will go on immediately after... I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. Well, what is it? I was looking at those ducks you shot yesterday, and you know, boss, they're pretty small. Yes, they are small. In fact, they ain't ducks at all, they're pigeons. <laughs> Look, Rochester, I ought to know what I shot. What makes you think they're pigeons? One of them's got a message on his right leg. What? Just took Manila. Sign do it. Dewey? Boss, those birds are going to be tough. Oh, some kid must have put that message on for a gag. I still insist they're ducks and we're going to have them for Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Now, take them out of the icebox and dress them. I'll have to wait till you get here, boss. They're so full of buckshot, I can't lift them alone. <laughs> well, then, then ask Mr. Billingsley to help you. Where is he? He took the message and he's flying to Washington. <laughs> well, well, for heaven's sake, stop him. Stop him. Too late now. He put the electric fan on his head and jumped off the roof. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And what happened? His feet are sticking out of the rain barrel. Well, get him out of there. I'll be home soon, so hang up. Okay. So long, boss. So long. Oh, say, Rochester, I've got good news for you. The next time we go duck hunting, you won't have to swim out for him. I'm buying a dog to do it. Thanks, boss. I was getting tired of chasing that ball anyway. I just did that to keep you in practice. Goodbye. Hmm. Of course, if I buy a dog, I'll have to get a dog house and a license. Sing, Dennis. Then if he bites the mailman, I'll be in trouble. Go ahead, kid. I have to think that over. <laughs> that was Shepherd's Serenade sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis, and quite a novel arrangement. Say, Phil, I noticed you put a harp in the orchestra for Dennis's number. And the harpist is a most attractive young lady. Yeah, she goes with my guitar player. Oh, the harpist and your guitar player. Is it serious? Nah, they're just stringing each other. Ha, 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 the Lulu. <laughs> Oh, Chris, still love. Mmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our drama of the gridiron entitled, We Can't Lose. Or, We Can't, eh? <laughs> the scene is Flatfoot College in the town of France. The first half has just ended in the annual game with Meatball Tech. And Coach Flash Benny is giving his team a pep talk in the locker room. Now, listen, men. In this next half, we've got to go out there and fight. You're playing like a bunch of jellyfish. You've been out there 30 minutes, and what's the score? I ask you, what's the score? Notre Dame 7, Northwestern 6. <laughs> That's the trouble with you guys. You're not concentrating on this game. Now, I don't want that portable radio out in the field while we're playing. <laughs> it's confusing. Well, I'm doing the best I can, Coach. Listen, Livy. All during the game, you've been tackling Meatball's quarterback and slapping him in the face. What's the idea? That's Jim. The rat never sends me pretty flowers. <laughs> never mind the romance. Just stick to the game. You said it, Coach. 
And you, left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle, and center. A fine game you've all been playing. Uh, none of your leper will walk out, won't we, fellas? You're darn right. Yes, you said it. <laughs> now, I cut that out. And you, Dave. Yes, Coach? Every time you get the ball, you fall down. Why don't you run? I keep tripping over the lace on my pants. You're wearing the wrong one. <laughs> now, look, men. We've still got a chance. The game isn't over. All we got to do is get rolling. Why, the score is only... Only... Sixty-five to nothing. <laughs> Sixty-five to nothing? Hey, when did we get a nothing? <laughs> we started with that. Now, come on, men. I'm going to play with you this next half and show you something about football. We'll win this game, or my name ain't... Poison! Well, here we are, folks. The score is Meatball 65, Flatfoot nothing, and the second half is about to begin. Meatball is already on the field, and here comes Flash Benny and his Flatfoot team. <laughs> Darn that guy. Now, men, we've got nothing to worry about. I'll call the signal. Dave will carry the ball and crash through for a touchdown. Who, me? Yes, you. We're depending on you, Dave. You're the best player on the team. That gives you an idea, folks. <laughs> All right, men, let's go. Here we go, folks. Meatball's about to kick off. Flatfoot's lining up to receive. And there's the whistle. <laughs> Well, there's the boat, the Catalina. <laughs> On your toes, men. Well, there's my boat, folks. So I'll now turn the microphone over to that famous sports announcer, Mr. Raymond Radcliffe. Thanks, Captain Howie. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Raymond Radcliffe speaking. Oh, fine. I will now describe the last period of this swilling football classic. <laughs> classic? Lefty Wanfield of Meatballs making the kick. And there goes the ball. West Benny of Flatfoot receives the ball on his own 30-yard line and is nailed in his flat. Well, I didn't make much gain that time, fellas. But how can I with a fur ball? Your toupee fell on it. Oh. All right, men, this time we'll pull our famous hidden ball play. You know how it goes, uh, Dave? No, hum a little of it. It means that you carry the ball. Now, come on, men, line up. This is our chance. Signal. Hey, Wilson, pull in your left tackle a little. You're offside. All right, signal. Bow, Sam. Bring it, Sam. Crunch. Hey! Ooh. It's a Kawasu play. Flash Benny grabs the ball and relays it to Howard. No, it's to Wilson. Wilson Waddle's today. Dave grabs the ball and look at that fellow one. Run, Dave. Run. Dave is crashing through the line. Look at him one. Look at him one. It looks like he's off for a touchdown. He's 11 yards from the goal. And what's this? He's tackled. Day is thrown on the three-yard line, and he's not doing. <laughs> oh, that poor kid. Oh. oh, my goodness. He's out cold. Look at him laying there. Day, Day, speak to me. Say something. Say something. A twerk at me. Get the license number. <laughs> Oh, for crying out loud, play, Phil. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to wish all of you a very happy Thanksgiving. Say, Mary, I'm having a big Thanksgiving dinner Thursday at my house. Would you like to join us? Who's coming? Well, it'll be Robert Taylor and Barbara Sandwick and Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Fonda, and the Fred McMurrays, and, uh, and maybe Moe Lee. Him, you're sure of. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to take you back three days and show you how Jack Benny entertained the gang on Thanksgiving. The time, 2 p.m. last Thursday. The scene, the kitchen of Jack's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack, Mary, and Rochester preparing the dinner. Take it away! Now, what else? Oh, yes. Uh, Rochester, hand me those little plates there, will you? Here you are, boss. 
Let's see. A black one for Phil, a green one for Alice, a black one for Don, a green one for Mrs. Wilson, a black one for Mary. Say, Jack, make mine a green one. I don't like ripe olives. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll switch you and Don. There. I'm hungry. I think I'll eat mine now. Drop that. <laughs> I don't want you to spoil your appetite. You know, we're having wild duck for our Thanksgiving dinner. No chip beef this year, eh? <laughs> Not unless we run short. Rochester, uh, what are you putting in that dressing? I thought a dash of gin would snap it up a little. <laughs> What? Who ever heard of putting gin in dressing? On Central Avenue, it's a must. <laughs> well, I don't want it in this dressing. And put that gin back in the first aid kit. <laughs> oh, Mary, take a look in the oven and see how the ducks are coming along. Okay. What was that? They're not quite done yet. Now, look, that noise came from some live ducks I got in the basement. These ducks here should be done by now. Uh, what time did we put them in the oven, Rochester? About 10 o'clock last night. Let's see, that's 16 hours. They're done all right. They sure look tender, don't they, Mary? Tender? The middle one looks like Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> what an imagination. Now, Rochester, take each duck and stuff the dressing in it. I ain't gonna touch old Humphrey! <laughs> Cut that out. Now, get busy and stuff those ducks. Okay, where's the shoehorn? You don't need a shoehorn. Now, let's see, a green olive for me, a black one for... Say, Jack, why don't you give those olives a little company and put some celery on the plate? Celery? Okay. Open the icebox and get some. I don't know the combination. <laughs> It's 45 right, 23 back, and 10 right. That's it. Can I borrow your pencil, boss? Don't bother writing it down. I'm changing it tomorrow. <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yes, a green one for me, a black one for Billy Guest. <laughs> that must be Dennis. Uh, open the back door for him, Rochester. Yes, sir. Send that kid on an errand. He takes all day. Where'd he go, Jack? Over to Ronald Coleman's to borrow something. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're always borrowing from Mr. Coleman. That works both ways, Mary. Within the last year, he's borrowed over a dozen of my best eggs. Your eggs? Yes. His chickens laid them in your garage. <laughs> that doesn't make any difference. That's the same thing as the grapefruit near the fence. What hangs over is mine. Even Coleman's lawyer admits that. <laughs> well, don't ever hang your head over the fence or Coleman will pick your toupee. Ha, 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 I'm screaming. Here's the punch bowl you wanted, Mr. Benny. What is that? Here's the punch bowl you wanted. Thanks, kid. And what have you got in that bag? Some corn. Mr. Coleman says, please feed it to his chicken. <laughs> I've been feeding him plenty. Now, Dennis, the gang will be here pretty soon, so rub some of this burnt cork on your face. Okay. Burnt cork? What's that for? Uh, Dennis is going to help serve dinner tonight. It's an emergency. I hired Rochester's brother, and he didn't show up. Uh, what happened to him, Rochester? I was wrong, boss. He got 60 days instead of 30. <laughs> oh, well, I can use him New Year's Eve. Now, Dennis, uh, Rochester will be busy here in the kitchen, so it'll be your job to... Oop, there's the front door, and I, here's your chance to practice. <clears throat> See who's at the door, Sylvester. I'm going, Mr. Benny. I'm going. <laughs> hey, that's all right. That boy does the worst black face I've ever heard. Not so easy. I'd like to hear you do Irish sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mary. We'll sit in the music room until the gang gets here. A jukebox and an old fiddle, and you call it a music room. Don't run down that jukebox, Mary. And incidentally, I wish you'd stop playing it with lightsabers. <laughs> you got it all sticky. 
Mr. and Mrs. Wilson are here, Master Colonel Benny. Don't overdo it. Well, hello, Don, Peggy. Welcome to the Chateau, Benny. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Well, you're looking fine, Peggy. Uh, take Mrs. Wilson's coat, Sylvester. Yeah, the yuck, yuck, yuck. I wish he'd hold it down a little. Huh? Well, two servants tonight. You're kind of putting on the dog, eh, Jack? Well, it's a big party. Gee, Peggy, I'm sure glad you and Don were able to come to dinner today. Yes, I am, too. Don's been gaining weight again, and I'm so happy he's someplace where he can't overeat. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> well, I hate to disappoint you, Peggy, but there's going to be plenty of food on that table. Yes, and I love chipped beef. We're having wild duck. Now, let's have a little music while we're waiting. Mary, uh, put a nickel in the jukebox. I've only got one. I'm saving it for the apple machine. <laughs> All right, I'll put one in. That is, if I've, um... If I've, uh... Here's a nickel, Jack. Thanks. Uh, say, here's one of Phil's records. Uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo. <laughs> he uh, sings a chorus on this one. Very cute, too. Wait till you hear it. Isn't Phil a ham? He even puts applause on the record. <laughs> that was a good number, though. Yes, indeed. Uh, by the way, Peggy, I don't believe you've been in my music room before, have you? No, I haven't, Jack. And you've got some lovely old pieces here. Who furnished it? Harry Talkshop. <laughs> I only got the melodeon there. You know, Peggy, if you look around, you can get some of the... Uh-oh, here comes your border. Yeah. I wonder what happened to him. His arm's in a sling. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Having company for dinner, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, the others will be here pretty soon. Uh, won't you have a seat? Oh, thanks. I never touch them. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, I noticed your arms in a sling. Uh, how did you happen to break it? I was putting on my long underwear this morning, and I fell off the ladder. <laughs> Oh, well, why do you have to climb a ladder to put on your underwear? When I say long, I mean long. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Uh, won't you join us for dinner, Mr. Billingsley? We're having wild duck. No, I'll have a glass of dressing later. Good night. <laughs> hmm. Getting more eccentric every day. But who else would pay me $800 a week for room and board? <laughs> An amazing character, you know? Mr. Benny, can I speak to you confidentially? It's very important. Oh, now what? Excuse me, folks. What is it, Rochester? Boss, those ducks ain't never gonna get tender. Why? What happened? I just stuck a fork in one of them and it kicked gravy all over me. <laughs> now, that's ridiculous. It probably slid in the pan. That's all. You may be right, boss, but I don't think it would hurt to shoot him just once more. <laughs> don't you dare. I shot those ducks. All you've got to do is cook them. I want dinner served as soon as Mr. and Mrs. Harris arrive. But, boss... Now, get back to the kitchen. Dum, bing, bum, 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 bing, bum, bum. Dum, dee, dum, dum, da, ding, da, dum, dum. Oh, sorry, folks. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, Rochester's having a little trouble with the ducks. It seems... <laughs> well, everything will be all right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Jack, what was that noise? It sounded like a gunshot. How do I know? Well, folks, just as soon as every... There's someone at the door, Sylvester. Sylvester, answer the door. That's dough, boss. All right, answer the dough. <laughs> and don't shuffle, just walk. Say, Don, would you like a cocktail before dinner? Eh, Don? Definitely no. Hmm, well, <laughs> I can see who wears the pants in that family. With Don's, there's room for both of them. You said it. Announcing Mr. and Mrs. Phil Harris. Phil! 
Jill. Hiya, Jackson. And Alice. 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 Well, well, Alice, I'm sure happy you were able to come to dinner. Oh, I wouldn't have missed it for anything, Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> she calls me Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know everybody here, don't you, Alice? Hello, Alice. Oh, why, right, Peggy, I haven't seen you since our trip to New York. And Alice, uh, you know Mary Livingston. Huh? Oh, well, of course I do. Hello, Mary. So nice seeing you again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's a fine greeting. Who cares how many fan clubs she's got? <laughs> Mary, don't pay any attention to her, Alice. You see, Mary is always jealous of any girl that shines up to me. Well, who's shining up to you? <laughs> well, I mean that you... I mean... Explain that, Jackson. <laughs> don't get excited, Phil. Now, look, fellas, let's not have a brawl. I don't want duck stains all over the furniture. <laughs> Well, well, this is the uh, first time you've ever been to my house, isn't it, Alice? Yes, and I I think it's furnished in very good taste. What did you mean, Phil, I should wear my old clothes? (laughs) Why, Phil, you little rascal. Uh, Say, Mary, call up Luella Parsons and tell her Alice Faye is visiting me. She'll never believe it. She will, too. And call Harrison Carroll. Say, Phil, I want to congratulate you on your performance last night and the courtship of Miles Sandy. Yeah, it's the best play our night school ever put on, Don. Oh, yes, Phil. You were excellent as Priscilla. But as long as you were playing the part of a girl, why didn't you shave before you went out on the stage? I didn't want people to think I was on the level. <laughs> well, it spoiled it a little for me. Uh, by the way, Phil, uh, use the ashtray, Peggy. These rugs are expensive. <laughs> By the way, Phil, that's a girl. Uh, by, uh, uh, by the way, Phil, uh, uh, did uh, Phil, did you uh, did you get those flowers I sent you before the performance? Oh yeah, thanks for the Christmas anthemums. <laughs> Christmas anthemums. Phil, I told you last night it's one word, chrysanthemum. Oh, lay off, honey. I don't want no lecture on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Behave yourself, Phil, or I won't read that book to you anymore. Oh, what book are you reading to him, Alice? Oh, you know, Jack. A is for apple, so round and red. <laughs> B is for butter. You spread it on bread. What? Are you kidding? C is for crackers. You eat them in bed. I know them all. <laughs> Hey, you'll, you'll be up to the Rover Boys pretty soon. <laughs> well, I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to have a cocktail before dinner. Oh, don't, Jack. You always act so silly. I do not. One cocktail and it's... Look, fellas, I'm a Spanish dancer. Oh. A Spanish dancer? By that time, he's wearing a lampshade. Well, someone's got to put a little life in the parties around this town. Oh, Sylvester. Yeah, the yeah, the boss. Hmm. Go out in the kitchen and tell Rochester we're ready for dinner. I have a plan. Hold that barge. Lift up, babe. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, Alice, I hope you're good and hungry. I'm on a diet myself. You see, uh, I have to be on account of the new picture I'm making. I knew he'd get around to that. Quiet. You see, I'm working opposite Carol Lombard, and I must look my best. Well, Jack, I've seen you in pictures before, and as I recall, you always look very nice. Yes, I imagine I do, but of course, I look much younger on the screen. Oh, much, much, much. (laughs) Mary. You know, Alice, now that we're both at 20th Century Fox, maybe you and I will be working together soon. (laughs) Who knows? I think we'd make a swell team. Yes, you with your youth and beauty and me with my suave, debonair charm. Mm. You're right, Phil. He is hammy. (laughs) You know, Alice, the next time I see Mr. Zanuck... Dinner is served, folks. Walk. Do not run to the dining room. Oh, Oh, yeah. Now, this way. Hold on, Betty. That's 
Now, now Don, <laughs> you take Alice, Phil, you take Peggy, and Mary... Oh, Mary, call up Hedda Hopper and Jimmy Starr and Herb Stein. Tell them that Alice Faye's having dinner with me today. Okay. And call Sidney Skalski, too. Skalski? Yes. Who's going to boost him up to the telephone? <laughs> He's got a ladder like Billingsley. All right, everybody, grab your seat. And take your time now. There's plenty for all. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, We're all ready. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, boy, what a dinner. Say, this dressing is delicious, Jack. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Rochester, serve Mrs. Harris some more duck. Will you have another piece of duck, Alice? No, thanks. I'm still chewing on my first piece. <laughs> well, you've got beautiful teeth. Use them. <laughs> I, uh, I think the duck is very tasty, don't you, Mary? Yeah, but the next time you go out shooting, be more careful. Mine's full of buckshot. Mary, that's what that bowl is for. Dump the buckshot in the bowl. Oh. That's it. Personally, I think this is the finest meal that Pass I... me that bowl, will you, Mary? Here you are, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> well, I really banged away at that one, didn't I? But I still say this is a lovely dinner. Yeah, everything from soup to lead. Never mind, and have another cranberry. One cranberry? You're supposed to have cranberry sauce. Well, squash it. Are you helpless? <laughs> What's the matter with you, anyway? Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Uh, bring me a sharper knife. I got Humphrey. <laughs> Say, Alice, Alice, I have a real treat for you. After dinner, I'll take you downstairs and show you Carmichael, my polar bear. Oh, that's swell. I love animals. You do? Have you got any pets, Alice? Oh, just Phil, my little reformed wolf. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yes, sir. Some more, uh, some more dressing, Don? No, thanks. By the way, Jack, where's Dennis? Didn't you invite him to dinner? Yes, I wonder what happened to the kid. Me too. <laughs> Mary, now don't give it away. Oh, Sylvester, have we heard from Mr. Day? Yeah, the he phoned and left word that he was having dinner with Miss Hetty Lamar. Hetty Lamar? <laughs> that boy sure gets around, don't he? <laughs> All right, Sylvester, stop leaning on the table and get busy. Enjoying the food, Peggy? Oh, it's fine, Jack. And the dressing is delicious. What's in it? I really don't know. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? What's in this dressing? Woody! <laughs> He's like all good chefs, Peggy. Just won't give away his secrets. <laughs> Get another bowl, Rochester. This one's full. <laughs> Everything all right, Alice? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've never been to such a novel dinner party. Imagine, Phil, I got a prize in my dressing. A prize? Uh-huh. Look, a shoehorn. <laughs> <laughs> that is a novelty, isn't it? I got a red cross button in mine. Well, hand it over. I joined yesterday. That reminds me everybody should, especially this year. Rochester, I think we'll have our dessert and coffee in the music room. Okay, boy. That is, if everybody's had enough duck. Come on, come on, let's go in the music room. Say, let's have some entertainment while we're waiting for the coffee. Yeah, what do we do? Well, we can... Oh, I know... Hey, look at me, fellas. Yeah, take that bowl of fruit off your head. You don't look anything like Carmen Miranda. Well, somebody's got to entertain. Well, what about Alice singing a song for us? Yeah, what about it, Alice? Come on, Alice. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You hear that, Alice? Will you sing for us? Uh, wait till I finish chewing this duck, huh? All right. Now, tell you what. If you sing, I'll accompany you on the violin. No, 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 Jackson. No, not that. No. Oh. All right, all right. 
Come on, Alice. Uh, what's that song? <laughs> Alice, what's that song you did in your new picture, Weekend in Havana? Well, you mean <laughs> Tropical Magic? Yeah, that's it. You sing Tropical Magic, and I'll pull rabbits out of a hat. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Alice is going to sing. <laughs> Well, anyway, folks, that's just about what happened at Jack's house last Thursday. Alice sang her song, and then we all played games and had a swell time. And just as we were leaving, we could hear Rochester calling Jack. Billy! Mr. Billy! What is it, Rochester? What do I do with all this dump that's left over? Well, we can have it tomorrow night. Uh, make... What about the mashed potatoes and all this... Be very tasty. Okay, uh... Well, make a pie out of them. Cranberry pie is delicious, you know. Okay. Oh, say, boss. What? I think we ought to turn this buckshot over to the government for national defense. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Early yet, so I'm going out to see a movie. Is that still playing around? I don't mean Charlie's aunt. <laughs> see you later. Good night, boss. Good night, Rochester. <laughs> And we'll be with you again next Sunday at the same time. Well, Alice, it was awfully sweet of you to come over tonight and show the folks what happened last Thursday. And your song was really wonderful. Oh, thanks, Jackson. Jackson. She called me Jackson. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there being only 24 shopping days till Christmas, we bring you that 24-carat comedian with a heart of gold, Jack Benny. <laughs> um, um, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was very sweet of you. Gee, I'm a 24-carat comedian with a heart of gold. Did you like my introduction, Jack? Yes, in fact, if I was an imbecile, I'd fall for it. <laughs> Every year at this time, you give me that same hooey. You know, Don, you're about as subtle as your stomach. <laughs> if you get what I mean. Well, maybe so, Jack, but Christmas will soon be here, and you know the old saying, a word to the wise is sufficient. Don, here's another saying that's not quite so old. Don't count your presents until Benny gets off the nest and cackles. <laughs> But now that the subject's come up, uh, what would you like for Christmas, Don? Something for the house or something personal? Oh, anything at all, Jack. But I do hope it's more practical than what I got last Christmas. Oh, I've forgotten, Don. What did I give you last year? A sarong. <laughs> a sarong? Oh, my goodness, then I, then I must have given Dorothy Lamour your present. Oh, no wonder she hasn't spoken to me since. What'd you give her, Jack? Oh, Don, I'm so embarrassed, I can't tell you. Oh, go ahead. What was it? Well, Don, you know how you were gaining weight last year. Uh Uh-huh. So Dorothy got a 54-inch girdle. (laughs) (laughs) And, Don, here's the payoff. When you pull the zipper, it plays, why don't we do this more often? I kind of surprised you there, didn't I? <laughs> no, really, isn't that awful? Hello, Jack. What are you blushing about? Mary, I just found out that by mistake last Christmas, I gave Dorothy Lamour Don's girdle. Can you imagine that? Well, don't worry. She probably thought it was a hammock. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. Say, Jack, I want to get one thing straightened out right now. What? Before I buy your Christmas present, what are you going to give me? <laughs> well, that's a fine spirit. Mary, half the pleasure of getting Christmas presents is a surprise. Oh, sure. Remember how thrilled you were last year when I gave you that brand new Plymouth? You gave me a ticket on a Plymouth. (laughs) All right, I was just as mad as you were when you didn't win the drawing. (laughs) Just as mad. Matter? You wanted Congress to investigate. Well, what are they down there for? Anyway, I'm not going to tell you what I'm giving you this Christmas. Well, give me a clue. Is it big or little? Oh, not so little. (laughs) Well... Is it heavy or light? Oh, (laughs) medium. Well, do you wear it or eat it? Well, you can wear it or you can eat it. Jeepers, a rabbit. (laughs) Never mind. 
Say, Mary, have you got Jack's present all picked out? I sure have. What are you going to give me, Mary? Well, Jack, you know how crazy you are about swimming. Yeah? Well, I'm getting you a bathing suit with short pants. Oh, goody. Now I won't trip when I die. <laughs> I can go along with a gag, sister. <laughs> you know me. Say, Mr. Benny, you know what I'm going to give you for Christmas? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Uh, what are you going to give me for Christmas, kid? Is that what I said? Yes. Yeah. What are you going to give me? Oh, well, you've been so nice to me, Mr. Benny. I'm going to give you a brand new photograph of myself. Hmm. A photograph, eh? Yeah, and I'm going to write on it with gratitude from your tenor, Dennis Day. Hmm. Well, look, kid, unless that picture is surrounded by a silver frame, you better write E-X in front of that tenor. <laughs> Put a frame on it. Well, I'll have to think it over. You better not. That's how Kenny Baker happens to be with Fred Allen. <laughs> Hey, you're hot today, aren't you? <laughs> you said it, huh? Why, Jack, I understand Kenny left you because Alan offered him more money. Well? I wouldn't leave you for more money, Mr. Benny. Well, thanks. I wouldn't leave you for all the money in the world. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. You're my dream man. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Never knows when to stop. And furthermore... Can... Hiya, Jackson. Boy, are you lucky I'm here today. Oh, hello, Phil. What do you mean, lucky? Well, me and the boys were playing down in San Diego last night, and my fans just wouldn't let me go. You mean you went over great, eh? Great. Jackson, would you believe me if I told you we turned away over 10,000 people? No, I wouldn't. Oh. <laughs> oh, you see, Frankie, I made it too big. <laughs> you certainly did. And on our way back this morning, we played Laguna Beach, Steel Beach, and San Pedro. Now, hold on, Phil. There are no ballrooms open at that time of the day. Who needs ballrooms? They got street corners, I think. <laughs> what? You play street corners? Sure. We get out of the bus, give out a couple of tunes, and take whatever the people drop in the hat. Hmm, well, that's a great system if you're not too proud. How'd you do in Seal Beach, Phil? Oh, terrific. We got 20 dimes, 8 quarters, and 15 halibut. <laughs> halibut? Hey, that's my favorite fish. Speak to the piano player. 22 cents a pound. <laughs> Oh, you've got the fish in the piano, eh? Well, this will be the first time Charlie will be able to play a scale. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a Lulu. <laughs> Say, Dennis, I was wondering what was... <laughs> I was wondering what was dripping out of the piano there. Say, Dennis, uh, how about a song? Who, me? No, my Aunt Molly. Now, let's have your song. Okay. Wait a minute. Come in. Say, Mr. Harris, what do you want this bucket of ice? Ice? Yeah, bud, just dump it in the piano. I've got to keep them fish cold. <laughs> well, if that isn't the most... <laughs> Phil! Phil, what's the matter with you? That'll ruin the piano. <laughs> and get a load of that sign. Phil Harris and his orchestra. It's the fish that smell, folks. <laughs> well, that's just protection. Sing, Dennis. And the guy's been with me five years and wants to charge me 22 cents a pound. <laughs> that was Keaton Smiling, played for the first time on the air by John Philip Harris and his orchestra. You know something, Jackson? The boys in the army camps all over the country were listening to that song just now. Well, I hope they enjoyed it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our play, Dr. Jekyll... And Mr. Hyde. Take it, Don. The opening scene, ladies and gentlemen, takes place in Dr. Jekyll's office in early morning. As the curtain rises, we find his two secretaries seated at their desk. Curtain. Music. <laughs> No, but I expect him any minute. Thank you. I'll tell him. Goodbye. Hello, Mr. Hyde's office. Yeah, this is the secretary talking. No, he isn't in if he wants him and help you. What? Goodbye yourself. <laughs> Gee, I hope Dr. Jekyll is himself today and not that horrible Mr. Hyde. Well, I hope he is, Mr. Hyde, so he'll think I'm beautiful. Here he comes now. 
Ah, good morning, Miss Jones. Good morning, Dr. Jekyll. Are there any messages? Yes, Doctor. Mr. Allen called and said he couldn't pay his bill. Mr. Allen, will you tell Fred not to worry about it? Any time at all will suit me. You see, Miss Jones, the poor boy doesn't earn much on the radio. He gets paid by the laugh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't press him for the money. All right, Doctor. In fact, Miss Jones, just tear up his bill. See how sweet I am, folks, before I take the drug? Hmm? Uh, by the way, Doctor, there's a patient in the waiting room. He's very anxious to see you. All right, send him. Ah, good morning, young man. Good morning, Doctor. My name is Fingerwave. Otis J. Fingerwave. <laughs> well, uh, sit down, Mr. Fingerwave. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? I've got a terrible affliction, Doctor. I walk in my sleep. You do? Uh, how often does this occur? Every night. Every night I walk in my sleep. Hmm. Well, where do you live? All over. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, look, young man, there really isn't a cure for your condition, but as long as you're here, I'll check you over. Now, stick out your tongue and say, ah. Come on, say, ah. Ah. Hmm. That'll be two dollars. Next. <laughs> Next patient, please. Next. Can I try for the four dollar off? <laughs> no, that'll be all, young man. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Anyone else, Miss Jones? Oh, yes, Dr. Jekyll. Miss Carol Lombard just called and wants you to come over to the house right away. Carol Lombard? What's wrong with her? Uh, she's making a picture with Jack Benny and she can't keep a thing on her stomach. <laughs> Hey, Francis had the same trouble. I'll run over later. Oh, Doctor, your new boy is here. Oh, Johnny? Hello, Johnny. Hello, Dr. Jekyll. You want a paper today? Yes, yes. Here you are, sir. And here's a dollar. Keep the change. Gee, a 95 cent tip. Thanks, Dr. Jekyll. That's all right, Johnny. <laughs> I'll be back later, Miss Jones. Uh, uh, wait for me, will you, my dear? Yes, Doctor. Gee, he's a sweet man. <laughs> It is midnight, and we find Dr. Jekyll returning to his office after a busy day calling on his patients. Oh, what a hectic day. And goodness, look at the hour. Any calls, Miss Jones? No, but Mr. Fingerwave came by a few moments ago. Oh, was he walking in his sleep? I think so. He had a Do Not Disturb sign pinned on his pajamas. <laughs> well, he must get his rest, you know. Miss Jones, I've had a very bad day, and I'm frightfully tired. Will you give me a glass of water, please? Yes, Doctor. And have you seen my powders around anywhere. Oh, here they are. Yes, my powders. Oh, Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll, please don't take those powders. It's all right, Miss Jones. Don't worry. But, Doctor, you know what they always do to you. Please don't. Quiet, Miss Jones. Quiet. There. Please, please don't take that stuff again. <laughs> oh, Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> Oh, doctor, doctor, why did you do that? It's all right. It's all right. I gave you when I was Jekyll. <laughs> and over that cage, or I'll kick your teeth out. <laughs> I'm going out for a walk now. A nice long walk. And 
before I come back, someone will be dead. Murdered. Murdered. <laughs> and it may be that fish peddler. <laughs> Scene three, Dr. Jekyll's office the following morning. Yes, yes. I'll tell him as soon as he comes in. Goodbye. Good morning, Dr. Jekyll. Boy, have I got a hangover. Um, any calls, Miss Jones? Yes, Doctor. There's a gentleman waiting in your office. Thank you. Wow, what I had. I gotta go back to liquor. Those powders are killing me. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Doctor. My name is Beaumont. Tex Beaumont. Tex Beaumont. That name is familiar. What can I do for you? Well, Doctor, I'm in a horrible predicament. You see, I'm a cowboy actor, a star in Western pictures. But unfortunately, I work very little. Yes, yes, go on. The reason for that, Doctor, is my speaking voice. My voice is much too beautiful for a cowboy. Uh-huh. In fact, I'm not at all convincing. Even my horse laughs at me. <laughs> well, that is unfortunate. But I don't see how... But you must help me. You must. You see, when I go out, I'm shooting and they'll kill him. No one's a believe in it. <laughs> Well, as I say, Tex, I'd like to help you. But I'm afraid changing your voice is a little out of my... Out of my... Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can help you. You see this powder here? Yes. Well, by mixing it with water, an unusual thing sometimes happens. It may even help you. Doctor, doctor, what are you doing? I'm not going to take it. Not the way I feel. <laughs> Now, Tex. Yes, Doctor. I want you to drink this. It may change your voice, your personality, maybe your whole career. Oh, Doctor. I don't know how to thank you for what you're... You can thank me later. Drink. Drink. Drink it all. That's it. Now, just a little more. Good. He's twitching. Now, Tex, how do you feel? Tell me. How do you feel? Well, to tell you the truth, Doc, I feel kind of dizzy. What? What was that? Say that again. I beg your pardon? Quick, quick, drink some more. Okay, here it goes. Never mind, you don't have to. Well, Tex, you sound like a real cowboy now. Yeah, but my teeth are a little long, ain't they? Don't worry, they'll stop growing when they reach your chest. <laughs> okay, thanks, Doc. I'll never forget you for this. For it's what on the saddle. <laughs> hmm. That man's voice was strangely familiar. I wonder if it was... Oh, no, it couldn't have been. Play <laughs> with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that the man who sounded like Andy Devine on tonight's program was Elliot Lewis and Andy Devine. <laughs> See how I clear things up? Uh, good night, folks. Oh, Phil, uh, 19 cents a pound. No use getting stuck with them. <laughs> the Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my very great honor to bring you a man who last Sunday on this program gave you what was undoubtedly the finest performance of his acting career. That's right, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So without further ado, I give you the only actor in America who can make Jekyll and Hyde sound like Brenda and Cobina, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that may be your idea of a funny introduction, but to ridicule my performance of last Sunday, which everyone hailed as a dramatic nugget, that really burns me up. Now, take it easy, Jack. I thought you played the part well enough. 
But I happened to see the picture, and I didn't think you were as good as Spencer Tracy. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, Don, let me ask you something. Uh, who signs your check every week? Spencer Tracy or the Benny Goose that lays the golden egg? <laughs> Take that as my thought for today. But, Jack, you don't seem to understand. Oh, no. When Spencer Tracy played the part, there was a decided difference between both characters. But when you did it, I couldn't tell your jackal from your hide. <laughs> well, you can't tell your stomach from an igloo. <laughs> so what do you know about it? The fine pal you turned out to be. Not Jack. And don't call me Jack. From now on, you will please address me as Mr. Benny, and I'll call you Mr. Wilson. Is that clear? Oh, I think you're being very childish about the whole matter. Absolutely childish. Don't try to bring my age down. Flattery won't help. <laughs> Remember that, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson? Who's Mr. Wilson? That Hulk over yonder. <laughs> Listen, Mary, you witnessed my performance last week. What did you think of it? Well, personally, I thought you were very good as Georgie Jessel. <laughs> I wasn't Jessel. I was Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll. Well, in that case, boy. <laughs> Pooey? What do you mean, pooey? I don't get it. All right, take the word lovely and fool around with it. Let's see. Lovely, lively, low, low. Mr. Benny to you. <laughs> and let me remind you and Mr. Wilson of something that you both may have forgotten. When I switched from Dr. Jekyll to that horrible Mr. Hyde and that gruesome look came over my face, women in the audience screamed. One of them even fainted. Well, it won't happen today. They caught that mouse. <laughs> All right. Well, then I guess I can take these bicycle clips off my pants. <laughs> However, as long as you and Don are in such a critical mood, I'd like to point out that Christmas is only 18 days away. Why else did you come in mad at everybody? All right. Keep it up. Keep it up. You know, I already bought your Christmas present, young lady, but I may exchange it for something cheaper. Something cheaper? Yes. They don't dig a bargain basement that deep. <laughs> well, you worked in more of them than I did. <laughs> I can go along with a... Ouch! You do that once more, Miss Livingston, there'll be a... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Gee, was that a performance you gave last week? Was that a performance? <laughs> well, thanks, Dennis. I'm glad you liked it. Not only me, my whole family thought you were wonderful. That's nice. I'm glad someone appreciated me. Listen, Jack, the trouble with you is the minute you do something halfway good, it goes right to your head. Mr. Benny was wonderful. Quiet. Why, to hear you talk, Jack, anyone would think you were the biggest ham in Hollywood. Oh. I'd like to see a bigger one, by golly. <laughs> hmm. Well, thanks, Dennis. You tried. Anyway, you thought I was good. Oh, marvelous. What a performance. <laughs> Well, look, uh, look, kid, I'm making out my Christmas list today, so before singing your song, how about throwing out a few hints? Uh, what would you like Uncle Jack to get you? Well, I thought of a few things, but they're pretty expensive. Just name them. You're one person in this cast that deserves the best. Wait till I get my pencil here. Now, what do you want, Dennis? Well, I'd like to have a nice gray suit with a pinstripe. Okay. One gray suit with pinstripe. Anything else? Well, I'd love to have a grand piano to practice my songs on. Okay. One grand piano. Are you sure you got lead in that pencil, Mr. Benny? <laughs> yes, yes. Now, uh, what else do you want, Dennis? Well, I've always wanted one of those toy birds on a stick. And when you swing it around your head, the bird goes... <laughs> Hmm. Okay. One bird on stick. Now, what else do you want? Oh, stop, will you? You're just trying to make Don and me jealous. Dennis isn't going to get all that stuff. Well, he's getting something he wants. Gee, I wonder what it is. I'll give you a hint, kid. <laughs> Don't spoil 
all this surprise, for heaven's sake. Now, go ahead with your song, Dennis. Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I want to congratulate you on your performance as Mr. Hyde last week. I was so frightened, my hair stood on end. <laughs> What hair? Right there. Stand up, Herman. <laughs> oh, get out of here. <laughs> Herman. Well, I suppose if you only got one hair, you might as well have a name for it. Sing, Dennis. Very good. That was a medley of everything I love and all the things you are sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. But what's the idea of singing two songs today, huh? Well, Mr. Benny, I've got two girls, and I thought I'd dedicate a number to each of them. Two girls. Well, that's modern youth for you. You know, Dennis, when I was your age, uh, I was satisfied with only one girl. Gussie Bagelquist. Ah, <laughs> uh, Gussie was a dream, yeah. Is that the girl you sued because she cut you with her buck teeth? <laughs> I never sued her. I just told her to get a brace on. <laughs> anyway, I was talking to Dennis. Whatever happened to your girl, Mr. Benny? Uh, Gussie? Oh, I went into Baudible, and she went away to veterinary college. And... <laughs> we sort of drifted apart. She's one of the biggest horse doctors in northern Illinois now. Uh, doing uh, very well, too. Do you keep in touch with her, Mr. Benny? Do you ever write to her? Oh, once in a while when he has a cold or something. <laughs> Yeah, I had a touch of the flu a couple of weeks ago, and she sent me some pills that were as big as baseballs and some liniment to rub on my withers. <laughs> One thing about Gussie, though, I never get a bill from her. That's... Well, hmm. Look who's here. Hiya, Jackson. How's my pal? Don't Jackson or pal me, Mr. Harris. Let me ask you something. Did you or did you not go into the Brown Derby after last Sunday's show and tell people that my acting was putrid? Last Sunday? Maybe I did. I say that lots of times. <laughs> well, you did. You told everybody at your table that I was very bad as Jekyll and Hyde. How do you know? Because I've got a waiter there that spies for me. Naturally. You couldn't tip a waiter just for waiting on you. Mary, that's a little arrangement between Andre and me. Yeah, I should have known that waiter was a spy. His mustache fell on my suit. <laughs> he wearing a false mustache. I told him not to overdo it. Anyway, Phil, you did run down my performance. Yeah, but I changed my mind about that. You know, I met one of the greatest dramatic actors in this town last night, and he said you were great. Orson thought you were terrific. Who, Orson Welles? No, Orson Buggy. <laughs> Ain't that a new well new? <laughs> well, ma'am, <clears throat> that settles it. <laughs> If I don't get Glenn Miller in my stocking Christmas morning, I'll never write another letter to Santa. And incidentally, Mr. Harris, you better have a good excuse for coming in late today. Well, I'm sorry, Jackson, but I was out shopping. Say, Mary, you know what I'm getting, Alice, for Christmas this year? No, what? A roaster. A roaster, say. You know, for the oven. <laughs> That's a roaster. Buys his wife a roaster for Christmas and calls it a roadster. All right, I'll put wheels on it. Hmm. <laughs> That's a sharpie, eh, Jackson? It's a toppy, eh, Jackson? Toppy, toppy, toppy. <laughs> and don't call me Jackson. I'm Mr. Benny to you and to everybody else on this program except Dennis. You mean I can call you Jack? Yes, until I make up with the others. <laughs> What burns me up, I worked my head off on that play last week and did a swell job. You sure did, Jack. <laughs> and this little episode just shows me who my friends are. That's telling them, Jack. <laughs> After all, I had to follow a pretty good actor in that part, Spencer Tracy. Why, I would never have even tried it if we both hadn't won the Academy Award. Wait a minute. When did you ever win the Academy Award? And another thing. I said, when did you ever win the Academy Award? Hmm. And another thing... Answer my question. When did you win the Academy Award? I wish I had, brother. Would I have you in a spot? <laughs> I guess that takes care of you. You say it, Jackie. <laughs> Look, Dennis, just Jack, not Jackie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Give me a minute. She wants to take the whole foot. <laughs> what a gang. I got a good mind to go home. Oh, for goodness sake, Jack, will you stop acting like a baby? You ought to know the whole thing was a rib. Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, I liked your performance in Jekyll and Hyde so much that I wrote a sequel to it. Well, ain't you the fat little Noel Coward? <laughs> Who cares what you wrote? And Jack, Jack, now get this. As a favor to me, I want you to play the leading part in this drama. Huh? <laughs> I'll tell him when he comes in. You can keep your old sequel. But you've got to help me out, Jack. There's no one else in the cast with sufficient dramatic ability to handle it. Look, I'm not going to... Dramatic, eh? Well... <laughs> Well, all right, Don, I'll do it. I thought you were mad at him. Never mind. You'd go over Niagara Falls in a Dixie cup if someone told you it was dramatic. <laughs> What's dramatic about a Dixie cup? Don, you say you've written a sequel to Jekyll and Hyde? Yes, Jack, but my play is called Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jekyll. Oh. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Here's the script. Thanks. Just a second, Don, I'll give you a build-up. Chord, please. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Wilson, that eminent American author, has written another of his famous one-act plays. Take it, Don. The scene is the residence of Mr. and Mrs. Homer D. Hyde in the thriving little town of Upper Plate, Indiana. It is 7.30 p.m. Curtain. Music. Oh, dear, it's 7.30 and Homer isn't home yet. I wonder if his Orson buggy broke down. <laughs> Gee, I hope it's one of his moods. Ah, here he comes now. <laughs> Good evening, Homer, dear. You're a little late, aren't you? All right, I'm late. And I'll be late any time I feel like it. <laughs> aren't you going to kiss me, darling? Kiss me, kiss me. Every night a kiss. I'll kiss you with this umbrella. I'm going to bed. Good night. But, Homer, you haven't even said hello to the twins, Otto and Blotto. <laughs> Say hello to Daddy, children. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Also, one more peep out of you kids and I'll kick your teeth out as soon as they grow in. <laughs> I'm going to bed now. But, Homer, darling, you haven't had your dinner yet. Dinner, dinner, every night dinner. I don't want any dinner. But, Homer, dear, at least have some dessert. What kind of dessert? I won't tell you, but I'm sure you like it. Here, have a dish. <laughs> Very well. I'll try it. But if I eat it and decide I don't like it, someone will be dead. Murder. Murder. <laughs> Hold it. Come in. Well, Mr. Benny, you did it again. Were you scared? Look at Herman. He just won't go down. <laughs> what a head he's got. That's the only persimmon I ever saw with brown eyes. Play, Phil. That was Nango from Weekend in Havana, played by Blotto Harris, and that goes for the whole orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next week is a special attraction. Gee, Mr. Benny, I can't get over the way you played Mr. Hyde just now. Was that a performance? <laughs> it thrilled you, eh, Dennis? I'll say. That crazy laugh just sent shivers right through me. Well. The kid's right, Jackson. How'd you ever learn to do that? Well, Phil, you just have to get into a, the mood and feel it. You have to imagine that you're a raving maniac. When was the first time you ever did that crazy laugh, Jack? Last year at San Anita, he lost three races in a row. <laughs> Never mind. When they caught him, he was chewing down the grandstand like a beaver. <laughs> well, you'd be mad, too. So let's forget it. Now, as I started to announce, ladies and gentlemen, next week is a special attraction. You know, Mr. Benny, I'd like to learn how to do that laugh so I can scare my girlfriend. Oh, it's easy, Dennis. Yeah, I wish you'd show me how to do it, Mr. Benny. Oh, I don't Come see. on, Jackson, do that laugh for us again. Well, look, Dennis, here's the way you do it. You've got to screw up your face and get it all distorted. Then you rip open your tie and shirt. Well, don't you have to muss up your hair a little? My hair? You know, those three Hermans. <laughs> That's not important. 
Anyway, Dennis, once you're in this mood, you read a menacing line and then laugh. Now, get this. I'm going out for a walk now. A nice long walk. And when I come back, someone will be dead. Murdered. Murdered. <laughs> Ooh. What's the matter, Jack? My jaw. My jaw goes out of place. Look at it. His what? His jaw. His jaw kicked out of place. Get a doctor. Get a doctor. Hurry up. What a performance. Bagelquist, Waukegan, 8362. Now, her, just hold on to the Now, take it easy, Jack. Take it easy. Oh, her. Just hold still, Jack, and I'll snap your jaw back in place. All right, hurry up, John. Now, brace yourself. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Dennis, the next time you want me to show you something, wait till the program's over. Well, it's your own fault for showing off. I wasn't showing off. <laughs> Phil, well, I got a few left over from last week. <laughs> Those fish back in the piano. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce before I dislocated my jaw, next week as a special attraction, the Benny Stock Company is going to present. <laughs> oh, now what? Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. What do you want? Boss, it's no use. I tried and tried, and I can't get calm. I'm going to go to sleep. Rochester, that polar bear's got to go to sleep. He's supposed to have been in hibernation over ten days ago. Uh-huh. If Carmichael doesn't get to sleep by the middle of this month, he'll be a wreck in the spring. Where is he now? Sitting up in bed reading Esquire. <laughs> Esquire? Well, take it away from him. Oh, come now, boss. He's been around. <laughs> I mean, he's got to get to sleep. Now, Rochester, use a little, a little psychology on him. Give him some warm milk. Give him, give him some warm milk, put on his pajamas, and brush his teeth. Would you mind repeating that slowly, please? I said give him some warm milk. Uh-huh. Put on his pajamas. Uh-huh. And brush his teeth. Uh-uh. <laughs> Rochester, what are you afraid of? That bear is as gentle as a lamb. He wouldn't bite you. He wouldn't, eh? No. Then why am I the largest single user of band-aids in the USA? <laughs> Rochester, listen. Carmichael doesn't hate you. He likes you. He likes everybody. Then what happened to the gas man? <laughs> Nothing happened to the gas man. Carmichael doesn't eat people. You ought to see that letter he wrote Santa Claus. What letter? Dear Santa, please send a fat boy to read the meter. <laughs> oh, stop making things up. Now, you keep Carmichael in bed, and when I come home, I'll sing rock baby to him. That'll put him to sleep. Okay, so long. So long. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Are you coming home for dinner tonight? Yes. Well, that'll finish up the wild up. Good, good. So long. I gotta get that bear to sleep before Christmas or he'll want a present. Play, Phil. Ooh, my jaw. <laughs> then we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, well, Mary, you want to have dinner at my house tonight? No, thanks. I've had so much of that duck, I'm a bigger quack than Gussie. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to her, Gutsy. Good night, folks. Phil! The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the height of the Christmas shopping season, let us leave the studio and journey two blocks north to Hollywood Boulevard, where we find Jack Benny's Maxwell cruising along and holding up traffic as usual. Yeah, I wish we could find a place to... Come on, get going, get going. Take it easy, will you? What's the rush? Get that cement mixer off the street. Says you. Guy's lucky I got my glasses on. <laughs> Rochester, can't you step on it a little bit? Boss, this car couldn't go any faster if it was spring and there was a pretty match well up ahead. <laughs> all right, then, just drive. Boy, the streets sure are crowded today. I hope I can get all my shopping done. How far is it to the store? About eight more blocks. You think we'll make it by Christmas? Mary, we've got ten days. It's a cinch. And don't be so... Whoop! 
There's a place, Rochester. Where? Oh, somebody else pulled in there. My goodness, we've been an hour and a half just looking for a place to park the car. Well, why don't you spend 15 cents and put it on a lot? Because the streets belong to the people, and I'm a people. <laughs> I mean... Oh, for heaven's sake, Rochester. What's the matter? You just missed another swell place to park. Up by that lamppost. That's all right. This car only turns left. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> the steering rod's broken, Mary. Well, if the car doesn't turn right, how are we going to get back to Beverly Hills? I got it all mapped out, Miss Livingston. We go straight to Pasadena, left to Bakersfield, <laughs> left to Oxnard, then down the coast and home. <laughs> We'll get home all right. Once we get to Carthay Circle, we can head in any direction. <laughs> Are you comfortable up there in front, Dennis? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Benny. That's good. And, Dennis, please take that sign off your back. Well, I want it there. You don't need it. Everybody knows you're not Japanese. <laughs> Now, take it off. Well, I've been mowing your lawn so much, everybody calls me Togo. <laughs> Never mind. The kid's got a face like Jigs, and he's worried. <laughs> Believe me, Dennis. Whoop, whoop. There's a whoop, whoop. What are you whoop, whooping about? Rochester, says there's a place to park right across the street. Can't do it, boss. I'll have to make a U-turn. A U-turn? There's a $2 cover charge for that, and no floor show. <laughs> Well, make it. Nobody's looking. Grab hold of the door, Mary, so it won't fly open. The door's on your side. Oh, yeah. Well, here we are. Uh-oh, a whistle. Is that a policeman? It ain't the Chattanooga Choo-Choo. <laughs> hmm. It's a cop, all right. Shut the motor off. Gee. What are you going to do, Jack? Quiet. Dennis, you're Irish. You talk to the policeman. Gosh, I don't know what to say. All right, let me handle it. I'll think of something. Hey, you. What's the idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block? Eh? What's that, son? I said, what's the idea of making a U-turn in the middle of the block? Don't you know that's against the law? Well, I'll tell you, officer, I don't get to the city very often, so I don't know much about them new fangled laws you got here. <laughs> what a performance! <laughs> Every, be quiet. You see, officer, I live out Sherman Oaks Way, and I just drove my old lady and my boy in to see Santa Claus. Patooey. <clears throat> Ain't that right, Miranda? You're darn tootin'. Patooey. <laughs> This is the missus, officer. Glad to know you, ma'am. Now, look, old-timer, you got to observe the traffic rules while driving in the city. Well, I'll tell you. Get your gun, Pa. That man's a revenuer. <laughs> Esri? Well, officer, I reckon we'll mosey along now. Thanks very much for your advice. All right, old-timer, but don't let this happen again. I won't. So long. Merry Christmas, officer. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, got to get the shopping done. Drive on, Zeke. Oh, boss, come now. Rock it. Get going, Z. <coughs> Gotta get that shopping done. <laughs> One hour later. Whoop, whoop. There's a place over there, Rochester. Oh, darn it. Someone beat us to it. Now, listen, Jack. If you don't put this car in a parking lot, I'm getting out. Oh, all right. But I don't see what... Rochester, stop in front of that cigar store. I'll be back in a minute, Mary. You can cash in those coupons some other time. Okay, Smarty. But if those pearl necklaces, number 58, are all gone, you'll be the one to suffer. <laughs> Now, where's the parking lot? There's one up the road a piece, Pa. Pitooey. Dennis, you're not a rube anymore, so take that blackjack gum off your tooth. Rochester, drive into this parking lot here. Okay, boss.
All right, come on, Mary, get out. You too, Dennis. Dennis, get out. Wait a minute, my pants are caught in the spring. <laughs> you wouldn't sit on that newspaper. You had to be a smart alley. Now hurry. Here comes the attendant. Hey, buddy, be careful where you put this car. I don't want the fender scraped. I'll be back in an hour. Sorry, mister, I can't accept this car until it gets dark. What? What do you mean? I knew this was going to happen someday. <laughs> now look, buddy, that sign says cars parked 25 cents and here's my quarter. Now park my car. Okay, but I'm going to hide it in back of that billboard. <laughs> All right, hide it. Come on, Mary. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How do I know you'll come back for this thing? <laughs> I'll come back, don't worry. Come on, Mary. Okay. Hey, buddy. Yeah, lady? That steering rod is broken, so if you want to turn right, you got to go through Pomona. <laughs> Let him find out for himself, the wise guy. Rochester, I'll meet you right here in an hour. Okay, boss. And remember, for every bottle of horseradish you sell, you get three cents. <laughs> See you later. Dennis, you stay with Rochester and sing. That'll attract the crowd. Okay. Come on, Mary. Mary, don't look at me that way. That horseradish grows wild in my backyard. <laughs> See, this store is crowded, everybody pushing and shoving. Oh, Mary, have you got my Christmas list? Yes, here it is. What does it say? Unless my vacuum cleaners return before January 1st, I shall take legal action. Sign Ronald Coleman. <laughs> the list is on the other side. Let's have it. Well, why don't you give Mr. Coleman back his vacuum cleaner? Because Mr. Billingsley took it apart and made a bagpipe out of it. <laughs> so all I hear around the house lately, the Campbells are coming, ta-ra, ta <laughs> Well, let's see. What's on the list here? A safety razor for Don. Hey, oh, my goodness. Hey, buddy. Buddy, what are you doing with your hand in my pocket? Like you said, we're buddies. <laughs> You're a pickpocket. Get out of here. Hmm. Now, let's see. Let's see, a razor for Don, a dozen blades for Phil, and a bird on a stick that goes brrrr for Dennis. Remember, Mary, last week he told me he wanted one. You told me at Cyril's last night you were going to buy Dennis a grand piano. Last night I had over four glasses of Muscatel. <laughs> I'm all right now, so where's the toy department? Let's ask the floor walker. There he is. Oh, yes. Dennis will love that bird on a stick. How much do they cost, Jack? Oh, 15 cents. Or $15. Who knows? You do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he'll love it. Now, pardon me, sir. Are you the floor walker? What do you think I am with this carnation? A flower pot? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm looking for a toy bird on a stick, and when you swing it around your head, it goes, brrrr, brrrr. You're a little old for that, aren't you, Quibble? <laughs> it's not for me. I'm getting it for a young friend of mine. He loves toy birds. Don't alibi. If you like to swing birds around your head, come out and say so. <laughs> I don't like to swing birds. Believe me, it's for a kid I know. Now, will you please direct me to the toy department? Very well. It's on the third floor. Thanks. Like fun it is. <laughs> Never mind. I'll locate it myself. <laughs> Certainly a fine store to do business with. You walked in, Sugarfoot. Nobody drank. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Come on, Mary. I think the toy department is over there in the back there. Say, Jack, what are you going to get me for a present? Well, Mary, I thought I'd buy you something to go with that sable muff I gave you last year. Sable muff? That was rabbit. It was sable. Rabbit. I was walking through the farmer's market yesterday, and it snapped at a head of lettuce. <laughs> Listen, Mary, a lot of sables are vegetarians, too. And it happens that... Oh, my goodness. Now, look, buddy, I'm warning you for the last time. Take your hand out of my pocket. Ouch! My finger. You asked for it. Now, give me back that mousetrap. <laughs> hand it over. The cheese, too? <laughs> There's no cheese in it. This one's for pickpocket. 
Now get away from here. Now, Mary, I think if we go down this Uh-oh. Aisle... Say, look, Jack, look who's coming. Isn't that your boarder? Oh, yes. Hey, Mr. Billingsley. Mr. Billingsley. Hello there, Mr. Fanny. Doing your Christmas shopping, I see. <laughs> Yes, I'm in here buying a few knickknacks. Me too. I found some lovely knicks, but what floor are the knacks on? Hmm? <laughs> I really don't know. You'll have to ask the floor walker. They'd get along fine. Yeah. By the way, Mr. Billingsley, I suppose I shouldn't ask you this, but uh, what are you getting me for Christmas? Well, Mr. Vanny, you know how crazy you are about raising flowers. Yes. And you certainly like to win a prize at the next flower show. Yes, yes. So I'm getting you a hundred pound sack of fertilizer. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hmm. Well, it's a practical gift, I'll say that. Come on, Mary, there's the toy department at the end of this aisle here. <laughs> Gee, I thought it was over here. Maybe the toy department is on the next floor. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the perfume counter. I think I'll get some for my sister, Ethel. Well, don't spend a lot of money on perfume for her. She's so nearsighted, she can't read the label. <laughs> no, but she can smell like a bloodhound, so it's got to be good. Well, go ahead, buy it. Uh, pardon me, miss. I'd like to get... Well, some... Mary Livingston, of all people. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake. Dolly Dinklehoff. Dolly Dinklehoff? It's Dolly Dinklehoff Harrington now. I finally got a man. It can't be the Harrington I know. He'd have wired me. <laughs> What's new with you, Mary? Anything exciting? Oh, I'm still on the radio. You know, I always thought you'd marry Butch Leroy, the fellow that worked at the gas station. Oh, we broke up, Dolly. I haven't seen Butch in years. Well, you should have hung on to him. He's got his own gas station now with three grease pits. <laughs> Imagine. Can't be Tom. Hey, who's this gentleman with the gray hair? Anything serious? <laughs> Hmm. Oh, pardon me, Dolly. This is my boss, Jack Benny. Oh, hello, miss. Gee whiz, Jack Benny? You know, I heard you do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde last week. What a perfect <laughs> Can't be Tom Harrington. <laughs> oh, thanks, uh, Thanks, Dolly. Uh, come on, Mary. Uh, you can get your perfume later. All right. <laughs> Oh, long, Dolly. So long, Mary. I'll tell Butch I seen you. <laughs> hmm. Butch Leroy. I bet that Butch was a corny guy. At least he was a gentleman. What do you mean he was a gentleman? When all the lights went out the other night, you grabbed me and wanted a neck. <laughs> well, I was so nervous, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, look who's here. Hiya, Jackson. Mary. Are you shopping around too, Phil? No, nah, I'm just waiting for Alice. She's up there in the, uh, in the beauty saloon having her hair done. <laughs> He's only got one line on the program. Can't get it right. <laughs> In the first place, that's salon, not saloon. Incidentally, ringlet. <laughs> ringlet, why aren't you up there? Because it ain't a saloon. Oh, that's a sharpie. See you later, Phil. So long. Oh, say, Jackson, I just seen Billingsley walking out of the store with a big sack over his shoulder. What's the idea? That's my Christmas present, Phil. Boy, am I going to have flowers. <laughs> Big ones yet. And how? Ha, ha. Hmm? Come on. <laughs> huh? Come on, Jack. We're going to get that toy for Dennis. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Mary. Phil just reminded me of something. Let's go down to the bargain basement and get some cheap ties for the boys in the orchestra. Huh? <laughs> oh, Jack, why don't you get him some good ties? Look, Mary, as long as the elastic snaps in them, they're happy. <laughs> 
Come on. Here's the door to the basement right here. Jack, I am not going down to the bargain basement this time of the year. It's murder down there. Oh, it won't be so bad. Open the door. Okay. <laughs> It is. It is pretty crowded at that. <laughs> Come on, we'll get Dennis's toy. I can just see that kid's face Christmas morning. Yeah? Oh, here's the toy department. Where's the clerk? Here he comes. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the toy department. What can I do for you? <laughs> mm, uh, look, I'm interested in a toy bird on a stick for a young friend of mine. Well, I don't know if we got one, but here's a novelty that all the kids is crazy about. A chemistry set. A chemistry set? Yeah. You know, it's a science thing with a lot of chemicals. Oh. Oh, you mean chemicals, huh? Take it, Jack. It'll make a beautiful Christmas present. No. Well, it's nice, all right, but aren't these chemicals a little powerful? Are they? I give one of a youngster on his birthday, and he blew up three cigs before they got him. <laughs> Well, I don't think I care for that. I'm interested in a toy bird on a stick. Well, here's something that's not only fascinating, but entertaining as well. A mama doll. Uh, a mama doll? Yeah. See how it works? Well, ain't that the nut? <laughs> A mama doll is a lovely gift, but I'm afraid that... You know, the... I used to have one of those things when I was a kid, but my big brother broke it. And when I woke up the next morning, there was my poor little dolly with the head all smashed to pieces. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Can I borrow your hanky? <laughs> Yes, yes, here you are. Now, look, mister, what I really want is a long stick with a toy bird on hey, the... Hey, Jack, here's one. Isn't this what you want? Yes, that's it. A yellow canary on a stick. Look, Mary, here's the way it works. You swing it around your head like this, and the bird goes... Hey, mister, what's the matter with this? It doesn't work. What's wrong with it? Look, I'm swinging it around my head, and the bird is supposed to go... Play with it yourself. Not much you did. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Floor Walker. I was just testing it out to see if it worked. It's supposed to go brrrr, and it doesn't. The reason it doesn't go brrrr, is because you broke it. I did no such thing, did I, Mary? No, you broke the mama doll. I didn't break the mama doll. It was this guy's brother years ago. When I woke up in the morning, the poor Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, look, Mr. Floor Walker. All I came in here for was a bird on a stick. And if you haven't got that one, it goes... I'll go someplace else. And you're not going until you pay for the one you broke. So, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, my Lord, all right, I'll pay for it. But I'll tell you one thing. This is the last time I'll ever do shopping in this store. And here's something else. I've been talking for more. And you're the only one I'd like to walk along. I'll go Fine lot of shopping I did today. I'll have to start over tomorrow. <laughs> Gee, it's getting dark. Yeah. Say, Rochester, how are the headlights on this car? Four seven ready for a black house since 1922. <laughs> well, turn them on anyway. By the way, Rochester, are they any blackouts down on Central Avenue? Yes, sir. Night and day. <laughs> Oh, what I meant was... Hey, Jack, there's that policeman who's going to give you a ticket. Oh, yeah, slow down, Rochester. Howdy, officer. Got my shopping done. Going back home now. Hey, step on it, Jeep. Okay, boy. Bye, Patty. <laughs> We'll be 
with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Gee, Mary, I'm so tired from all that shopping. Imagine how you feel if you'd have bought something. Oh, I'd have been a wreck. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Yuletide season is here with all its joy and gaiety. So without further ado, we bring you a star to place atop your Christmas tree, Ah. Jack Benny. (laughs) Well, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, that was quite a whimsical introduction, a star to place atop your Christmas tree. I suppose you said that because I'm a movie star. Is that right? No, Jack, that wasn't my thought at all. Oh. I meant that you actually and physically resemble a star. Well, I don't, uh... I, uh, I don't get it, Don. What do you mean? Well, for instance, you've got a dash of silver in your hair. Yes. And you've always got a merry twinkle in your eye. Yes, yes. And the seat of your pants is always bright and shiny. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And you're wearing the only pair of pointed shoes in Hollywood. (laughs) Now, wait a minute, Don. I'm not going to argue about the silver and the twinkle, and I'll even go along with the shiny pants. But these pointed shoes I've got on are very popular. They're French Shriner and Erner's new bayonet model. (laughs) They're, uh... They're very snappy, don't you think? Snappy is right. But personally, Jack, I like a shoe that spreads out. Listen, brother, any shoe you step into is doomed. (laughs) Believe me. Oh, I'm not so heavy on my feet. You're not, eh, Don? Your arches fell the first time your mother said, Come on, Snookums, walk toward me. (laughs) But speaking about these shoes I'm wearing... Wow, get a load of them. Did Vaudeville come back? No, Vaudeville didn't come back. (laughs) Just so happens that for a change, I switched to a pointed, tight-fitting shoe. Then where do you keep your money now? (laughs) I've got a hollow tooth. I can go along with a gag, sister. (laughs) And let me tell you something, young lady. Any more of those Livingston Lulus tonight, and your invitation to my Christmas party next Thursday is automatically canceled. Remember that. Well, Jack, speaking of your party, what are you going to serve for dinner? Turkey, goose, or duck? Ham hocks, and not another word about it. (laughs) Come early, Don. You know, a lot of big big movie stars are going to be there. Movie stars? Name one. Now, there'll be lots of them. Come on, name one. Oh, they'll be there. Don't stall. Name one movie star that's going to be at your party. All right, Rodney Dangerfield. I know he's coming because he already sent me a wire by Western Union. Western Union I heard about, but who was Rodney Dangerfield? (laughs) Who was Rodney Dangerfield? Well, I'll be... Mary, did you see the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail at the Hitching Post Theater last week? Did you? No. Well, that was Rodney's greatest performance. If you could have seen him jump out of the second-story window of a burning building and gallop out of town on his horse blazing away with his six-shooter in one hand and playing tumbleweed girl I love you on his guitar with the other. (laughs) Well, what a scene. Pretty thrilling, huh? Was it? A kid sitting in back of me got so excited he beat me on the head with a stick of licorice. (laughs) Anyway, you'll meet Rodney at my house next Thursday. Who else is coming, Jack? Well, you know, I'm making a picture with Carol Lombard, so naturally I had to invite her... And I also told her to ask Clark if he wanted to come. Gee whiz, is Clark Gable going to be at your party? Well, I'm not sure about him, but I got a definite no from Lombard. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see, and the uh, Gary Coopers can't come, and the Henry Fondas had a previous engagement, and Bob Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck have a toothache. Between them? How do I know? And then Claudette Colbert can't come. She sprained her ankle. I saw her dancing at the Macombo last night. With that ankle? Poor kid. (laughs) And then uh, Errol Flynn can't make it. He's in New York, you know. Now, let's see. Oh, yes, Barney Dean. He's coming. I'm I'm sure of that. Well, here I go again. Who's Barney Dean? (laughs) Who's Barney Dean? 
Did you see Sergeant York? Yes. Well, he was a soldier in that. <laughs> That's who. Anyway, Barney Dean will be there. And then I invited... Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, bub. Sorry I'm late, but I was across the street shooting pool. Shooting pool? Well, let me ask you something, Phil. Who pays you your salary, me or the pool room? Look, Jackson, if I didn't take the salary I get here and double it over there, I'd have to give up me. (laughs) Too bad about you. Hey, Phil, are you and Alice coming to Jack's party? Oh, I don't know. Who's going to be there? Everybody from Barney Dean to Rodney Dangerfield. Don't run him down. Hey, is Rod Dangerfield going to be at your party? Yep. Oh, that guy's terrific. I think he's darn near as good as Hoot Horowitz. (laughs) What do you mean, darn near as good? Did you see Rodney's latest picture, the Fargo kid rides the Pony Express on the Santa Fe Trail? Yeah, I seen it last week. That was a thriller, wasn't it? You said it. I got so excited I hit some old bird in the front of me with my licorice stick. <laughs> oh, ho! So that was you. You were at the Hitching Post Theater last Tuesday evening. Not so loud, Jackson. I was playing hooky from uh, my night school. Oh. Well, don't worry. I won't squeal. You better not, Sponger. I'll have to drill you. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> You're not a drilling me, son, because I'm the sheriff. A bang, a bang, a bang. A uh, uh, bang. <laughs> <laughs> These two cowboys come to you through the courtesy of Jello, who are open for suggestions. <laughs> Never mind. We'll talk about the picture later, Phil. Now, how about a band number? Okay. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Am I going to be invited to your Christmas party? My name is Pigeon. Walter Pigeon? No, Dead Pigeon. A bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> What a head he's got. That's the only grapefruit I ever saw that can take shorthand. (laughs) He's my secretary, folks. Play, Phil. (laughs) That was Popo Catapetal, played by Phil Harris and his Yuletide Orchestra. Yule meaning, you'll have to go a long way to hear a band like this. And tide meaning, I wish they'd go out with it. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, but no kidding, Phil. That number sounded swell. It was really the nut. Hey, where's Dennis? Here I am, and back in Mr. Wilson. Oh. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. You gotta humor the kid. <laughs> Say, Dennis, have you got a nice song prepared for today? Yeah, but first I want to thank you for letting me come over to the studio the other day. Oh, don't mention it. That was a pretty hot love scene you did with Cal Lombard, by golly. Yes, it was. Gosh, when you grabbed her and gave her that big kiss, I got so excited I was quivering all over. You were? She didn't even move a muscle. Never mind. What's the matter with that girl? I don't know. Look, boy, she kisses Gable when she leaves home in the morning, and she kisses him when she gets back at night. Anything in between is strictly cheesecake. <laughs> well, I don't want to be catty, but... Oh, well, forget it. How about a song, Dennis? What's it going to be? I'm going to sing a medley of Christmas Carol. Good. Oh, say, fellas, that reminds me. I've got to go home early tonight and do some work on my Christmas tree. I want to get it all trimmed up for the party. You want to come and help me, Mary? Sure, why not? Phil, after Dennis's song, you can play a few selections and fill out the program. Well, that'll give me a chance to play a couple of high-class numbers like who's this place? Uh, you know, Andre Costa... What's the rest of this here? Lannis. Andre Costa Lannis. Oh, brother. Well, why do you always embarrass me by making up them big words? <laughs> I didn't make up anything. That's the man's name. He's married to Lily Pond. Her, I can say. <laughs> Look, Phil, just accompany Dennis a song, then put on your hat and go home. Come on, Mary, let's get out of here. What's that? Come in. 
Telegram. I mean, special delivery for Mary Livingston. <laughs> right here, bud. Give him a tip, will you, Jack? Okay. Here you are, boy. Here's a half a dollar for you. Thanks. I can go along with a gag. A boom. <laughs> you can louse it up, too. <laughs> He had to put a boom on the end of it. Wasn't satisfied the way it was written. Had to put a boom. Anyway, I'd like to see one stooge in this town with hair. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. This letter's from Mama. You can read it in the cab. Come on. Oh, let her read it now, Jack. Mary's mother's are... She's just a, a riot. Oh, all right. I'm glad you got that out, too. <laughs> we had an hour program. We'd be very successful here. You know that. Right? All right, read your mother's letter, Mary. What's the head of Hopper of Plainfield got to say? <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary. Just in line to let you know that Christmas is almost here, and as yet I have not received your X chase. Okay. But don't get me wrong. If your check has been delayed in the mail, I take back everything I'm thinking. How can anybody be so mercenary? Your sister Ethel and her husband are here for the holidays and will spend several weeks with us. Inasmuch as they live right next door, I think this is an imposition. Oh, I don't know. Quiet. You ought to see your sister's new baby. Everybody says it's a regular little doll. And they're right. It looks just like Popeye. Well, no wonder after all your sister is no role. And that husband of hers, does he still sell bluing house to house? No, he's a vanilla extract man now. Oh, vanilla extract man. Oh, he's going places. Come on, finish the letter. Speaking of Christmas, I saw your father tiptoeing up the stairs last night with a great big package over his shoulder. I was thrilled to death until I found out the package was your Uncle Willie. <laughs> Boy, was he full of vanilla. No more news, except that your brother Bacardi... Bacardi? <laughs> Papa named him off a bottle. Oh, oh. Except that your brother Bacardi was turned down by the army on account of flat feet, chest, and head. <laughs> also, his hands drag on the ground when he walks. <laughs> Gee, his nails must be a mess. Huh? <laughs> Love to all, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. Oh, wait a minute. Here's the P.S. Tell Jack I heard him do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the program a few weeks ago. What a pew foreman. <laughs> pew foreman? Let's see that. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm. If I'd have known this was going to happen, I'd have put another cup of water in that perfume I sent her. Sing, Dennis. See you Christmas, fellas. Come on, Mary. Let's get over to the house. Right up here, buddy. It's that big white house with the iron reindeer on the lawn. Okay, pal. Boy, look at that meter. A dollar and a half. Hmm. Oh, driver, how much do I owe you? Like she said, a dollar and a half. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, how would you like to match? Three dollars or nothing? Double or nothing? Okay, pal. I'm matching you. Just a second. Okay, here goes. Come on, lift up. Hmm. Well, <laughs> so long, pal. <laughs> Darn that Rochester, so why doesn't he answer the door? here all night? Oh, take it easy, Jack. Calm down. What's three dollars? It's not the money. I don't believe in gambling. 
Don't talk to me. I feel awful. Why don't you take off one of those shoes and cut your throat? <laughs> Mary, I'm in no mood for any... Good evening, boss. Happy Yule time. Rochester, you were late answering the door, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm fining you three dollars. <laughs> You understand? I wish the stock market would come back that fast. <laughs> Never mind. Any messages, Rochester? Yes, sir. Mr. Charles Boyer called and said he won't be able to attend your Christmas party. Why not? You got me, boss. He gave his excuse in French. <laughs> well, that's the sneakiest thing I ever heard of. Any other messages? Yes, Lady Mendel phone. Said she got your lovely invitation, and who are you? <laughs> Did you ever go to the movies, for heaven's sake? Come on, Mary, the tree is in the library. Bring my slippers, Rochester. Your slippers? Yes. Lounging, bedroom, or ballet? I'm in no mood for a ballet dance, believe me. Bring in my lounging slippers. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. While I'm putting the star on top of the tree, you can be hanging popcorn balls on the branches. Oh, is your tree going to have branches this year? <laughs> yes, it's going to have branches. <laughs> well, I think the one you had last... La- Uh-oh, here comes your border. Yeah. I wonder why he's carrying that hatchet. Hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Home a little early, I see. (laughs) Yes, yes, I have some work to do around the house. Oh, Mr. Billingsley, what are you doing with that hatchet? Are you a Boy Scout now? No, I'm going out to dinner later, and when I say chopped chicken liver, that's what I mean. Oh, uh... Oh, I, uh... I see. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Keep him flying. <laughs> hmm. I can't... I can't understand Mr. Billingsley lately. You know, Mary, he slept under his bed last night. He hung onto the springs like a bat. Yeah. Weird fellow. Well, there you are. There's my Christmas tree, Mary. Isn't it nice? Yeah, that's the biggest one you ever had. Where'd you get it? We got it just north of Redwood City. Well, let's start with the decorations. Mary, you hang up these candy canes and I'll... Rochester, what happened to that box of popcorn balls we had in the closet? I got bad news, boss. There's nothing in there now but a big fat mouse. <laughs> Darn it, I'm short of ornaments. Got to have something to hang on that tree. Yes, those socks look awful by themselves. <laughs> the socks are coming off as soon as they're dry. I wanted popcorn balls to add a little... Say, I have an idea. How would oranges look there? Oranges? Yeah, I've got a backyard full of them. I'll go out and pick them. Meanwhile, start with those candy canes, Mary. I'll be right back. Jingle bells, jingle bells, yum, bum, 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 bum. Three dollars. I had to match them. Yum, bum, 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 bum. Oh, well. A jingle bell, jingle bell, the um empty. Let's see. I think there's some big ones in this tree over here. Yeah, these will be fine and nice big juicy ones. I'll take about a dozen. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, mister. What are you doing? Hello. Six. Oh. Oh, hello, little girl. Where did you come from? Just looking around your yard. Where's your polo bear? My polo bear? Oh, he's asleep for the winter. Do you live around here? Yes, we just moved into that new house next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, next to Ronald Coleman's. Oh, that's well. We're, we're going to be neighbors, aren't we? Uh-huh. You're Jack Benny, aren't you? That's right. That's who I am. Uh, gee, I heard you do Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde on the radio... What a performance! <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, it was pretty good. Say, little girl, your face is kind of familiar. Haven't I seen you in pictures? You might have. My name's Carolyn Lee. Oh, Carolyn Lee. Yeah. Well, this is certainly a surprise. So little Miss Lee is my neighbor. Ah, you can call me Carolyn. (laughs) 
Ah, oh, good. And, and you can call me Jack. Okay, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, she's cute. Say, Carolyn, are you going to be busy Christmas morning? I don't know why. Well, I had a telephone call from Santa Claus last night, and he told me he was going to leave a beautiful present under my tree, especially for you. Well, let's analyze this. How did Santa Claus know you were going to meet me? Oh, he even knows about things before they happen. He knows everything. Then and why that's you... why we've got to be real good, especially around Christmas. Then why are you picking Mr. Coleman's oranges? Look, Carolyn. <laughs> These aren't Mr. Coleman's oranges. What hangs over the fence is mine. Now, let me tell you something about Santa Claus, Carolyn. Every year at this time, he makes a list of good little boys and girls, and when they wake up Christmas morning... Hey, boss! Boss! Come in here! I'll be with you in a minute. And, Carolyn, if these old boys and girls have been real good... You gotta come in now, boss! Mr. Billsley's chopping down the Christmas tree! What? <laughs> chopping down the tree? See you later, Carolyn. Mr. Billingsley! Mr. Billingsley! Mary, stop him! It's too late now! Him Oh, my goodness. I knew I should have taken away his hatchet. We're a little late, so good night, folks, and Merry Christmas to all. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who gave a big party last Thursday at his home in Beverly Hills. A host whose Christmas dinner was the greatest thing since Harper's Bazaar Diet, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Did you log in? This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, for a man who ate 15 stalks of celery, and heaven knows how many when I wasn't looking, you're a fine one to complain. But after all, Jack, that's all there was to eat. Celery and ham hocks. Ham hocks? I had turkey You had ham hocks Sticking that feather duster in them didn't fool anybody <laughs> Look, it, it fooled Dennis because he asked for the breast <laughs> Anyway, Don, ham hocks are marvelous I'm crazy about them Well, I'm glad of that Because my wife says the next time you come to our house That's all you're going to get well, that's the cheapest thing I ever heard of. You've got a backyard full of chicken. Anyway, Don, regardless of what you say, my party was a success. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Say, Jack, do you notice anything new today? Well, let's see. Are you wearing a new dress? No. New shoes? No. New pocketbook? No. Well, I give up. What's new about you? I'm wearing that lousy mascara you gave me for Christmas. <laughs> Now, just a minute, young lady. In that gorgeous hand-painted gift box, you also found a lipstick and talcum powder and bath salt <laughs> and a beautiful pink and white washcloth. The washcloth I already returned to the Ambassador Hotel. <laughs> that didn't come from the hotel. It was made by the Ambassador Knitting Mills. Read before you return. <laughs> speaking of Christmas presents, I've got a good notion to tell Don what you gave me. What was it, Jack? A lot of thought she put into it. Well, it was useful. You've got to admit that. Sure, useful. Well, what was it, Jack? What did Mary give you for Christmas? A nutcracker for coconut. <laughs> so big, I can't even lift it. Well, I was going to get you muscles, but I didn't know where to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mary. You can take that present you gave me right back to the May Company. First thing in the morning. You take it. Every time I go there, I forget and punch the clock. <laughs> All right, I'll take it back myself. But the next time... Hey, look at Dennis. What's the matter with him? Where? Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? Just ask me how my girl is. Go ahead, ask me. <laughs> All right, Dennis, how's your girl? She can go sit on a tack. <laughs> What's this all about? What's wrong between you and your girl? Well, I gave her some beautiful earrings for Christmas, and just because I swallowed one, she slapped me. Well, for... Dennis, how in the world did you happen to swallow one of your girl's earrings? I was whispering something to her, and I got too confidential. 
Oh. Well, that could happen. But only to him. You said it. Anyway, don't worry, Dennis. You and your girl will make up. Oh, yeah? As soon as I get my bicycle back, I'm going to give her the air. Well, I... I don't blame you. I sold over 8,000 magazines to get that bicycle. It's mine. <laughs> all right, all right. Forget about your girl and your bicycle. And change the subject. Say, Dennis, did you have a good time at my Christmas party? Yeah, but gee, the turkey sure made me thirsty. Hmm. <laughs> mm, it was a little salty, but you had fun, though, didn't you, Dennis? You certainly met a lot of celebrities. What do you mean, celebrities? I mean movie stars. Ginger Rogers was there, wasn't she? Ginger Rogers' car broke down and she stopped in to use your telephone. Whoever walks in that front door is a guest. <laughs> Whether it's Ginger or Moivin. <laughs> and there were other stars there, too. Oh, say, Don, did you read any notices about my party in the society pages? I imagine all the papers covered it, huh? Mm, no, Jack, I looked, but I didn't see a word about your party. Oh. Oh, you didn't, huh? Well, I saw a swell right up, Jack. Where, where? Who, who, who? Who did it? Where, <laughs> what, where, where? Where, 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 where'd you see a write-up? In the downtown shopping news. Oh. <laughs> oh. I thought you'd like to read it, so I clipped it out. Yeah. Get a load of this, fellas. Jack Benny's Christmas party last Thursday was one of the outstanding events of the Beverly Hills social season. Well. Among those present were Rodney Dangerfield, the cowboy star, Barney Dean, Stella Buggenhaven. <laughs> That's uh, Rodney's leading lady, remember? Yeah. And your reporter, Scoop Scoopski. Good old Scoop. <laughs> Go on, Mary. A delicious ham hock solid duster were enjoyed by all. <laughs> Ham hocks. Quiet. Uh, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> and, and the highlight of the evening was when Miss Ginger Rogers stopped in to use the telephone. I'll never forget the look on Scoop's face. After dinner, the guests retired to Mr. Benny's rumpus room, which was tastefully decorated with holly, mistletoe, and a huge bag. That was the present Mr. Billingsley gave me. <laughs> Boy, am I going to have flowers. <laughs> Uh, what uh, what else does it say, Mary? Uh, the party broke up around 10 p.m. when the ace of spades fell out of Barney Dean's sleeve. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought Rodney was going to shoot him. Uh, that was a lovely notice, Mary. Well, Dennis, uh, give it to me, Mary. I'll send it to my father. He thinks I'm cheap. Uh, well, uh, well, Dennis, it's time for a song, so how about it? Say, I thought Mr. Dangerfield did take a shot at him. Dennis, we won't discuss those things now. Uh, let's have your song. Okay. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? A happy new year, you I wish, and season's greetings so delish. I hope your days are bright and sunny. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> Get out of here! Sing, Dennis. I must call up Barney and see if he needs another transfusion. I don't know. was Who Call, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was swell. By the way, kid, before I forget it, I want to thank you for that lovely Christmas present you sent me. Shaving cream is one thing I can always use. Yes, sir. That wasn't shaving cream, Mr. Benny. That was a tube of anchovy paste. <laughs> oh, anchovy paste. Hmm. I was wondering why it didn't lather. Huh? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Hmm, the cat kept licking my face all morning. <laughs> that should have tipped me off right there. Oh, well. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hiya, fellas. Well, tomorrow's the big night. You got your reservation in, Jackson? What reservation? You know, me and the boys. We're opening downtown at the Biltmore Bowl. Oh, yes, that's right. Hmm, Wilshire Bowl, Biltmore Bowl. Said you and your orchestra have been in more bowls than a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> hey! Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to pull that tomorrow night. Can I have that gag, Jackson? It's yours for two bucks, Phil. That's what I paid for it. I'll be glad to get out from under, you know? <laughs> Say, Phil, what kind of a show have you got lined up for the opening? Ah, it's terrific. First, we're going to play some straight band numbers, then sing a lot of novelty songs, and then Charlie Bagby's going to do a soft shoe dance. <laughs> uh, Bagby, your piano player? Does he dance? No, but we got to get him up. That stool needs painting. <laughs> Oh, oh, And then, on the late show, Frankie, my guitar player, is going to get up and do some acrobatic tricks. Look, Phil, on the late show, if Frankie just gets up, I'll give him a hand. Believe me. 
And don't tell us any more. You'll spoil it. Huh? <laughs> Say, Phil, you're opening going to be formal. Do I have to dress? Well, you ought to wear something. <laughs> <laughs> Always an answer. That Harris is a clip. <laughs> A clip. <laughs> that Harris is a clip. What? <laughs> what a character. Say, Phil, shall we tell? <laughs> oh. Shall we tell Jack the surprise we got cooked up for the opening? Yeah, Jackson, Mary, and me are going to do a cute little number called "How About You." You know, it's the one that Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland sing in their new picture. Hey, that ought to be good. And listen, if you want another great idea, how about? Oh, this is terrific. How about in the second chorus, if I pick up my violin and play... See what I told you, Phil? <laughs> Listen, Mary, it's Phil's opening, and if he wants me to play a violin solo, that's his business. Hey, eh, Philzy? Them ham hocks I ate, but the violin is over my dead body. <laughs> all right, all right. Say, Phil, why don't you and Mary try out that song for us tonight? All right, come on, Mary. Let's show them how it goes. Okay. All right, go ahead. But if you hear a violin in the second chorus, don't be surprised. Go ahead. Let's have the song. Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. What do you want? I was just wondering, boss, can I have tomorrow night off on account of New Year's Eve? Rochester, New Year's Eve isn't until Wednesday night. Well, I want to let my hair down and take me two days to drink the curl out of it. <laughs> Now, Rochester, let me make one thing clear. You're getting New Year's off Eve. You're getting New Year's Eve off, and that's all. And furthermore, I want you to be back to work at 9 a.m. the next morning. 9 a.m.? Yes, 9 a.m. Okay. If I ain't in the kitchen looking the rose bushes. I'm not going to hunt for you. Now, look, Rochester, there are a lot of things you can do on New Year's Eve besides drinking. You can throw confetti. Uh-huh. And you can blow horns. Uh huh. And break balloons. Uh huh. And when midnight comes and the old year passes out. I want to go with it. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. You'll feel much better the next day if you stick to ginger ale like I do. Okay, you're the boss. You mean you're going to stick to ginger ale? No, just okay, you're the boss. <laughs> Well, I don't care what you do, but I want to see you 9 o'clock the following morning on the job. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I forgot to thank you for that beautiful Christmas present you gave me. That's all right, Rochester. I always wanted a fountain pen. That's good. Now that I got that bottle of ink, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. So long, Rochester. So long. So hard to figure out what to buy him. He has everything. Now, where were we? Well, Mary and me are going to get out with that song. Oh, yes, go ahead. And remember what I said about the second chorus. Sing, my little chickadees. My writers are working for W.C. Fields now. That was How About You from the MGM picture Babes on Broadway, sung by Mickey Harris and Judy Livingston. <laughs> with violin hot licks by Jivin' Jackie Benny. <laughs> you see, that fiddle bit in there really helped the number, didn't it, Mary? Didn't it, Phil? Dinner, Don. Dinner, Dennis. Who, me? Thanks. <laughs> and now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as is our custom at this time of year, tonight we are going to present our annual New Year's play entitled The New Tenant, or Goodbye 41, Hello 42. Now, once again, I will play the part of Hey, the... Mr. Benny, every year you do one of these plays and I don't understand them. Well, you see, Dennis, these little sketches we do at the close of each year are not so much plays as they are allegorical fantasies. Oh. See, they, um... <laughs> you see, they deal with the abstract and the uh, esoteric rather than with the prosaic. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Uh, do you understand, Dennis? Give me that again, and if my face lights up, stop. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now, now look, uh, look, kid. It's nothing but abstract symbolism. Have you got it, Dennis? Yes, sir. Rub a little on me, will you, kid? 
Phil, you... <laughs> Phil, you've got an important role. You're going to be Uncle Sam, so study it. Now, in our sketch tonight, I will play the part of the old year, 1941, who has been living in a big boarding house called the United States, run by Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Mary, you're going to be Columbia, and you have 48 children, one for each state in the Union. 48 children? Holy smoke. Well, you were born in 1776. Oh, well, that's not so bad, then. Of course not. <laughs> and, oh, yes, you have some adopted kids, too, like Puerto Rico, Hawaii, the Philippines, and so on. And now for our play. As the curtain rises, it is almost midnight of December 31st. And old man 1941 is up in his room, packing his bags and ready to make his exit. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Oh, Columbia. Columbia, will you come up here, please? What do you want, 41? Give me a hand with this packing, will you? Got to get out of here before midnight and make room for the new tenant. Oh, yes, little 42 will be here any minute. Boy, am I a wreck. I'm glad I'm not a leap year. I couldn't stand another day. <laughs> You're telling me. You didn't have starch in your beard. You topple right over. I do look a little like a tripod. <laughs> I can go along with a gag. <laughs> Hey, uh, where's your husband, Uncle Sam? I'd like to say goodbye to him. Oh, he's around someplace. You know, he's been working night and day. He sure has. I like the way all your kids have pitched in and helped him, too. Here comes one of your boys now. Yeah, that's my fattest one. Hello, Texas. Hello, old-timer. Hiya, Ma. <laughs> my, my, look at the size of that boy. Yeah, he's getting a little plump around El Paso. <laughs> His Galveston could stand a little reducing, too. Right? Fine boy, though. Say, uh, Ma, have you seen Pa around? I got some new airfields I want to show him. Oh, he's out in the yard somewhere, and he's madder than a hornet. I'll go look for him. See you later, Mom. You know, Columbia, I don't blame Sam for being so riled up. You mean about our little adopted daughter, Lulu? Yep, Lulu. Burns me up just think of it. There she was on a Sunday morning out in the yard picking pineapples. Minding her own business. When a swarm of them darn yellow jackets flew in and stung her right in the back. That was a low-down trick if I ever heard of one. Well, yes, he's got plenty of flip there now. Let him come back. <laughs> hey, Columbia. <laughs> Columbia, hand me some of that swing music, will you? Might as well pack that. Take it along with me. Here you are. Thanks. Cut, shut, roll, turn down the reel around, in a brawl, a brawl, a suet. Boy, am I sick of that. Well, I'll just pack it in here in my grip. You might as well take all these strikes and arguments with you, too. Yep, you won't be needing them for a while. No, sheree. Hey, old timer, come over here by the window. Look. <laughs> well, I'll be darned, there's that mad dog Adolf. <laughs> Look at that bear chasing him. <laughs> Is that a Russian bear? It ain't Carmichael. <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, shut up, Benito. Who cares about you? <laughs> well, you got to be out of here before long. What time is it, Columbia? About three minutes to twelve. Hmm. I better get finished up here. Don't go, them double crossers. I'll get even with them if it's the last thing I do. Here comes Sam now. Hello, Uncle Sam. Ain't you gone yet? Nope, got about two more minutes. Now, calm down, Sam. Don't get excited. Well, it's about time I got excited. When I think of what they're doing to my boy, Manila. Well, I don't blame you. I'm going to kick the teeth out of them yellow devils. That's about all there is to them anyway. <laughs> Boy, Sam. Well, Sam, I'll be leaving you pretty soon. Doggone, look at that clock. Just got my duds together in time. Hmm, that's the first stroke of 12. Wonder what's keeping the new tenant. Little fella should be here by now. Don't worry, he'll show up. Now, here's a little tip for you, Sam. Just keep your shirt on, but your sleeves rolled up. Everything will be all right. Well, when I think of what they did to Lulu... Take it easy now. Take it easy. Hmm, time's a-fleeting. I can't leave till that little shaver gets here. 
That must be him now. Yes. Come in. Well. Hello, young fella. You the little New Year? This ain't a sarong I'm wearing. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> You're going to need a sense of humor, kid. Come on in. Want to meet Uncle Sam and his wife, Columbia. Glad to know you, folks. Hello, Sonny. Hiya, Bob. Make yourself to home. Well, son, I hope you brought some good things with you. You like staying in this house. It's the finest home on the block. I'm glad to hear that. You better be moving along, old timer. I've got work to do. Yep. Might as well be moseying along. But uh, before I go, I want to give you a little advice. First, take good care of Uncle Sam here. Let him get mad when he wants to, but see that he don't fly off the handle. Damn gall, darn pass. See what I mean? Take care of his friends and good neighbors, too. And that Dutch uncle of his. Leave it to me, old timer. And look, you may have to put out the lights here in the house once in a while, but see that that porch, the front gate, it's always burning. And say, before I forget it, Uncle Sam's got a nephew named Franklin that's taken mighty good care of the old boy. Ain't he, Sam? You're darn tootin'. So keep an eye on him, son, and give him all the help you can. Franklin, huh? Well, I'll write that down. And as long as you're writing down names, here's another one for you. Put down Winston. Winston? Yep. Franklin and Winston. What are these two fellows' last names? <laughs> Ain't necessary, son. Everybody knows them. Anyone else? Well, let's see. You can put down Chung Kai Shek. Nice fella. Believe me, he's just as tough as he is to pronounce. And oh, there's a lot more of them, but Sam will give you the names later. Well, gotta be leaving. So long, Sam. So long, old timer. Here we go. So long, 41. So long, Columbia. Keep them flying. <laughs> 